we're going to take a break. We're, let, let me just ask, is there other people, we have not done general public comment yet. We've all had public comment on three other items. Are there any people who would like to make general public comment at this time? Please come forward. Three minutes is your max. Hey, good evening. Uh, so I'm coming with just a simple problem. Uh, I'm a person who rides his bicycle everywhere. Uh, and to get to stores in Hadley, uh, I've come to rely on the rail trail. I've lived here for a short time, a year and a half. Last winter, we had a good amount of snow. We've had a good amount of snow this winter as well. Uh, the problem happens when we have enough snow that it sticks, tends to insulate itself, freezes, and the rail trail becomes unusable, uh, particular, particularly on bicycles, um, for, a lot, for an extended period of time. Uh, that's my issue. Uh, the alternative, to, I live on Northampton Road, the alternative to going down to go to the grocery store or as far as Walmart or what have you is to use Route 9 uh, going down uh, Northampton Road. Decidedly a pedestrian and cyclist unfriendly uh, situation. Uh, so I want to know, I don't know what's, I know that it's, it's the Parks Department that maintains it during the summertime. They're cutting plants and stuff like that. I don't know what it takes to plow the rail trail. You know, we plow the streets, we plow the roads. Uh, they might be crappy for a day, but they melt because we clear off all the excess snow that builds up. What would it take to plow the rail trail like we plow the sidewalks, like we plow the roads? Thank you for your question. We don't have an answer unless the town manager would like to provide one, although we don't usually do that in general public comment. Okay. Would you please repeat your name and where you live? Oh, yeah, I didn't start with that. My name is uh, Dylan Callahan. I live on uh, Kendrick Place off of Northampton Road. Okay. Um, perhaps if you would send us an email, I can see what I can find out as an answer. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Additional public comment. Please come forward. Excuse me. Good evening. Uh, I think I could provide an answer to his question. Do you not mind? I'd, we'd really prefer that not be your okay. public comment. Great. Thank you. Uh, Julian Hines, 54 High Street, District 4. Um, I unfortunately would like to express a little bit of disappointment in the council's decision to not hold public comment on the issue of electing a president and a vice president, as well as positioning the issue towards the end of the agenda. The council is a representative body where people, of the people, and the president is someone who sets the agenda and represents the councilors. Uh, not allowing pu the public to engage on this issue is, in my opinion, discouraging pu public participation. As we see our democracy fading away at the national level, it is now placed on local representative bodies, like yourself, uh, to set an example and stand up to, to be able to uphold our democracy. Not having public comment not having a public comment period on and setting this issue towards the end of the agenda is, in my opinion, discouraging public participation. And public participation is a very critical part of democracy. Um, at this time, at a time where our democracy is threatened, I urge you to consider adding, public com adding a public comment period to the next agenda where you elect a president president and vice president. I urge you to place this, place the issue of electing a president and vice president towards the beginning of that meeting's agenda. Um, I would also like to thank you for your time and consideration of my opinions. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, at this point, we're going to take a break and be back here in five minutes. Yes. We are, except for Paul. Okay. Um, in order to try to get out of here before midnight or even 11 o'clock, uh, what we're going to do with regard to the bylaws is the following. Jeff is here 
and he is going, we've asked him to speak to the various um, things. He wasn't able to be with us, what, back in January? I mean, December 16th. Um, but he'll speak to the various motions. But we are not going to have conversation or vote on those motions tonight. We're going to delay that until the 27th. Because, first of all, there's a couple places we need to polish it up. I know there's at least one motion that one person has asked to add to that, Kathy. And it'll give us an opportunity to do that in a much more clean and efficient way. And also get out of here before 1 o'clock tonight. Okay? So we're moving to bylaws. I don't know what you bet on, but I didn't bet on that. Okay, Jeff. Thank you, first of all, for your incredible work on and being the keeper of our bylaws and for being the assistant to two bylaw review committees, the one that preceded the swearing in of the council and the one that succeeded the swearing in of the council. So the, we had a pretty robust discussion last time Jan on December 16th. Uh, there are three and possibly four areas of bylaws that people have either said they would like to amend or in one case actually put something back in. And uh, perhaps you would like to speak to those and there may be just a few questions from the council. And then as I mentioned, we're not gonna actually take those bylaw changes up tonight. We're going to do that on the 27th of January. Okay. Absolutely, thank you. And. Um Obviously, I was just staff to the committee. They did the bulk of the work, so. No. Um, so. <laughs> um, so I think I'm aware of the three of the uh, potential amendments. Um, one is to uh, the bylaw review committee recommended removing the um, condo and cooperative conversion bylaw, and it was to put that back in. Um, I think that. The recommendation, that was the recommendation of the original 10.7 U committee, um, the appointed by the select board. And it, it was a discussion among staff and when was this bylaw last used? Has it been used recently? Do we anticipate it being used? Um, and the answer was it has not been used in recent memory. There was no anticipation that it was going to be used. Um, and that it hadn't been particularly popular, so it wasn't necessary. It wasn't necessary uh, in staff's opinion, uh, planning staff and inspection services um, to keep it, and that's why it was recommended for removal. You're the policy-making body. If you think it's important to maintain it, I, I don't think that there's. Uh, I certainly wouldn't have a strong objection. I wouldn't anticipate other staff members having a strong objection to keeping the bylaw on the books. Um, I, I, let me just pause and say, I believe, Kathy, as you have brought it back, you've actually made some changes in it, however, correct? It, yep, it, it had to have at least minor wording change because it was the select board that issued a permit. Right. And so the permit would have to go through the planning board. You know, it would it'd be a different permitting okay. process. Okay. And I thought it could be slimmed down the the uh, motivating force, there's a long paragraph as you've cleaned these up, you know, right now we're in the state of emergency is the way, and, and you've just stated that we haven't been using it. So we're clearly not in a state of emergency right now. So, I mean, that w had nothing to do with what was in it. So it would be put it back in, but it could be condensed with a few wording changes. Alyssa. Since we're asking Jeff, who definitely downplayed his role, we could not have survived any of this without Jeff, um, and the amount of detail that he put into all those reports that you all read very carefully is incredibly important. Um, beyond just objecting to what <laughs> Kathy's attempting to do with putting that, with keeping that bylaw in there, although I understand the logic behind it, is you can't change select board to planning board. That's not a thing. So um, that doesn't make any sense. You're talking about what was an executive elected body and putting it into planning board. That just, and so to me, if you really wanna make that change, I would need to understand better what other municipalities do that nobody, else, very few people have our form of government. So, I mean, Jeff could speak to the fact that we were really careful about who we transitioned and that there were a couple of points that were really difficult to sort out 
who should get it. You know, if it had just been a find and replace, town meeting becomes town council, town manager states okay. this. Okay, so the issue, again, we're gonna start getting into the debate of the actual change, so let's not go there. But the issue that I think Kathy will want to look at between now and the 27th is what is the appropriate substitution for what was in there? And, and I have the 14 other towns that have local municipal laws okay. for reference, and some of them do use their planning board. So that okay. would be the issue. Great. Thank you. Yes? Could I just suggest, since we're an open meeting, that maybe Board of License Commissioners be considered as the permit, the permitting authority for that because sure. they actually do do regulatory stuff too right so so yeah so that would be you know i found it in a couple of towns so any other okay. potential and are you submitting all of the documents in addition to the changes in other words the documents where you've looked at other towns i haven't yet i just provided a link to the document that gives the 14 okay. summaries um but I certainly can. Please do that. Okay. All right. So moving on to the next one. Okay. Um, the next one I believe was to, or the next one I'll talk about is reinserting language into the single use plastic bag ban bylaw. Um, and I believe the reasoning that it was originally taken out, uh, it was, I forget, what we called it, uh, introduction or purpose section, um, that if I recall correctly, talked about um, sort of the global issues, uh, cited statistics maybe from 2016, um, and the bylaw review committee felt that it was outdated and no longer um, necessarily relevant, um, simpler, similar to what Councilor Shane was saying about maybe not being in a crisis for condo conversions any longer. Uh, not, not that the issue isn't still important, just that the statistics might not be relevant anymore. Um, and then the removal of two related things, certain definitions uh, that were only used in one particular section. Um, and that section, the bylaw review committee felt was important, uh, was not critical because it was not actually enforceable. It was, uh, it encouraged people to bring reusable bags and it encouraged businesses to use several types of bags and I believe it um, recyclable, compostable, um, maybe reusable as well. Um, and, and there was no enforcement mechanism. It's not saying you have to offer these different types of bags. It was, uh, so the best practices that uh, at least the 10.7U committee had been following were sort of based on legislative drafting from um, the Mass Legislature, and it says you really only want to include in your legislation what you want to legislate, and, and this did not seem like it was actually legislating anything. It was just sort of um, more of a feel-good piece, and so that, I think that was the reasoning that, that the committee thought that um, it would be appropriate to remove that section and then once that section was removed, the definitions were not used elsewhere in the bylaw, so felt that those definitions were not necessary. Okay. Darcy? So we're not debating this now? No, we okay. aren't. We're just getting a sense of the committee's report from Jeff's perspective. Okay. Um, and then the Third is um, the inclusion in the unlawful noise bylaw of what I would call mechanical equipment, uh, or common mechanical equipment. <laughs> um, and I think that, and it, it's been a while since I've looked at the bylaw, so it, 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 I may not be getting this absolutely right, um, but I believe that the other examples of unlawful noise talked about uh, human-generated noise, amplified sounds, and I think that what we found was missing were mechanical noises, and specifically lawnmowers, snowblowers. We tried to think of, the committee tried to think of examples of loud noise that might be disturbing to neighbors if used early in the morning or late at night, um, and felt that it was not 
necessarily covered by and anywhere else in the bylaw, and, and it would be uh, important to include for that reason. So that's why that section was added. Okay, Kathy. I just have a question because I, I actually finally sat down for hours and read the work you'd put in, and it was a lot of work. And at the very beginning of the rewritten, you say, when we use the word includes, we're not being, there can be other things, so our list is not complete. So it struck me in this case on noise that there's a strong statement of what you're, what you're trying to prohibit, you know, sounds that disturb people. And you say this is, includes, and then you have a list of which things, but it's not exclusive to those. So by adding a couple more things, which might not make any noise, it doesn't strengthen it. So I, I think when we come back to this, I was thinking that that extra sentence just wasn't needed at all. Right. You know, and we had one person write in, I have an electric lawnmower, doesn't make any noise. You know, so I mean, it's some things that are, do make noise aren't listed. So I just come back, because you wrote a nice clause that said we're not, saying these are the only things. The okay. thing we're going after is loud noises that disturb people. All right. Could come from all these sources. Again, we'll get into that debate when we actually do this. Kathy, you had one other one that you did not raise back in, Jan in December. Right, I, I have one, and it was in a sort of a question. When I went back and read the edits on responsible employer, that had removed a long list of specifics. I understood that was because those were already stated in the MGL laws that were cross-referenced, but there were some specific wording that I couldn't find in MGL, and I just wanted to make sure that we're not removing a protection that used to be there. That, that's my question, and so I found a couple instances, for example, that the employer or the subcontract have to state in writing that they are going to abide by these. We don't have that sentence anymore, you know, so it's an attestation. Mm -hmm. And then we had a penalty if you terminate them altogether for, for violations that we had a 5% of the remaining liquid remains of the contract as a penalty. So we removed that. So I, I just kind of wanted assurance that we didn't, take something away that we've had because it went beyond what is in the state law. And I, so much of it was gutted. So that's a discussion for next week. Um, 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 let me just suggest that if you have specific areas in which you would like to understand or make sure that that was not done, would you please send them to me and I will forward I will them appropriately. Yeah. And I copied okay. and pasted them the sentences that I flagged so I can send them. Okay. And then the only other one, I mean, this is the other one on personnel board. I understood why you made the changes, but as I understand it now, the town manager is appointing the personnel board. We've taken away some of the authority they had to do, the authority to do procedures. And I wasn't sure we had to do that. So I want to have just a better understanding of that next. And I'll send my questions in. It was a question because the town managed the appointing authority. But it seems like we've removed a lot of the authority that the personnel board has had. And I didn't know whether we had to do all of that to comply with the charter or not. So I wanted a better understanding of that. My recollection is that that, that was the town attorney's interpretation of what the charter required um, as far as the authority that was vested in the town manager in the charter. Um, so I'll, I'll send the specifics through please. to you again yeah, because please. I can Thank see you. why one part, but it, it seems like it just undermined a lot and I thought maybe it went too far. Okay. We're gonna proceed then to the next comment. Thank you. And thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. All right. So at our last meeting, we had a discussion, uh, and there was an agreement that you would like to have a conversation about the roles and duties of the president and vice president, and particularly as in relationship to committees, et cetera, et cetera, meaning anything else you want to talk about. Um, and that separately, you would like there to be an election 
for the next term of the president and vice president. And during that time, individual counselors would be invited, allowed, otherwise called on to, in, in, so that everyone is called on, to make any kind of evaluative or other kind of comments they would like to about the candidates. So I then, whatever, comments about candidates, comments. That's in the election part of it, okay? So this is the, so I put together an agenda uh, suggested by one of our counselors, where we split the two. We put the roles and duties of the president and vice president relationship to committees first, and we put the election at the very end so that we don't change officers in the middle of the meeting. Um, so I, let me just say that um, in preparation for your, this discussion, um, your packet includes both copies of the charter and the rules of procedure with all relevant sections to the roles and duties of the president and vice president highlighted in yellow. Um, unless otherwise requested, we will not spend time reviewing those, but rather move immediately to the discussion. And I ask that as with all council discussions, we respect, uh, this, we expect and respect that this discussion be civilized. Thank you. Starting. You asked for the agenda item, let's hear it. Kathy. Um, I asked for the agenda item and I also had made the motion to delay, which uh, led us to this discussion. So I, I, I wanna start off by saying this was not at all um, directed at the job you've done as President Lynn or Mandy as Vice President. This was more looking across the committees and looking across the roles that the vice president and the president have played in committees as well as president and vice president. I'm concerned that we've got an emergence of a concentration of power that may not have been intended, intended, but that if you look at which committees the president is on, which committees the vice president is on, and know that they are also the two people that are meeting most frequently with the town manager more generally, um, not necessarily, the rest of us have a very good access to Paul on a list of issues from our district or things that have come up, but we don't go in with a, what's coming up, let's talk about it. That, and, and the reason I'm concerned about that um, is that we should think of ourselves as setting a precedent for the future where as much as possible Every counselor should be rotating through responsibilities where there's a rapid learning curve so people could potentially be enriched by it if they wanted to run for a second term. Um, and so the learning curve is, not, is uh, cut short if the concentration of power means not as many people are on key committees or they're not chairing key committees, that there's a repeatedness. That's one concern, and I'm also thinking that people looking in, saying, do I wanna run two years from now, will say, oh, there's an in-group that does almost everything. And some people might say, well, that's kinda nice, I can come on and be a new counselor and not spend a lot of time on a lot of different issues. Others would say, if I wanna come in and be a rapid learner and have a strong voice, I'm not sure I'm gonna get opportunities. Um, what do I need to do? Um, so it's a combination of the way the roles have played out interacting with committees um, where the president is appointing the committees and can appoint his or herself, can appoint the vice president, and, and, and thinking of the other roles they're playing. So that's why I wanted to initiate this. I didn't know of the way anyone else felt this way, but I, I had a worry and concern as I watched um, the key committees, and I'm and now I'm not calling just the council committees, but JCPC. We, that's a council-appointed committee in theory, rather than the president. But because of the way we started out, the president got all the lists of where everyone wanted to be, and some names repeat in key positions, often. So that's why I wanted to have this conversation. Okay. Additional comments, Evan. Sorry, I, this is. I want to just make sure I say this, and this will come up again, I think, when we get to the restructuring thing. 
but I really am uncomfortable with the idea of defining some of the council committees as key committees and others as not. I think we can all acknowledge that there might be an imbalance of power, but I think we should be looking at all of the committees of the town council as equal in their work, equal in their responsibility. And, and I think that will inform the discussion we have later. Um, but I, I do take issue with framing this as there are key committees and then there are not key committees and we need to think of it that way. I think that's a really problematic way to, to frame this. Not that I don't disagree with some of the things that were said, um, but I hope we don't continue a discussion that singles out some committees as key committees. Okay, additional comments? Yes, Steve. Yeah, so I think for me, the key issue is leadership development. And so I don't see the concentration of power because I think that maybe I'm blind to that, but I do see you know, um, opportunities for leadership development. And I, I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but um, so we know that the president's position is defined. We know that the vice president's position is only defined as it's, um, he or she sits in for the president if the president's unable to, you know, to serve. So I, I have heard about in, you know, agenda setting meetings and so forth, and I really don't know exactly what the vice president, you know, what that relationship is, the vice president and the president. But I do, I personally see the vice president as an opportunity for, you know, basically it's like a ride along, you know, on the, you know, with the, uh, as, as sort of a ride along where you can uh, learn about basically what happens behind the scenes or basically what the president does and make a decision from that if you want to someday run for president yourself, including tonight. Okay. All right. Additional comments? Alyssa? So I had actually asked for this conversation to take place by asking via email some months ago. And as I indicated at our last meeting, obviously we got busy. We all wanted to have another retreat. All the kinds of things came up. But um, reminding us again, not to be repetitive, but of the optics. So Kathy talked about one kind of optics. The kind of optics that I talked about also is that if it's just decided that we have a five minute meeting to have, or five minutes on the agenda, to have an election of president and vice president. It looks like we all decided what it was outside of the room. That's pretty clear that that's what happened because somebody must have discussed something somewhere. And so we don't wanna set that example for people. That's not what we wanna show. Is it really awkward to have these conversations in public? Absolutely, 100% super awkward. Um, is it unusual to try and have these conversations? Absolutely, but we just changed forms of government since 1954 to today. And so we are making changes. We are trying to make things better. We're trying to engage more people and trying to show that there's not just an in crowd and an out crowd. And we don't want to all just the 13 of us be the in crowd. And you know, we'll figure out who the president is you know, I don't want public comment on it, but I do want us to feel like we can have a conversation that isn't about individuals and the incredible amount of hard work that they've put into things. It's about the roles and how they perceive the roles and how they might consider thinking about their roles differently. So, for example, one of the things that came up when we had such an awkward election the first time that I had to nominate myself in order to feel like we could even have this conversation, so I'm glad we made the space for it this time so we didn't have to do that, is that there was this old bizarro way that the select board rotated vice chair. The reason for doing that was so that you would learn what it was like to do agenda setting. I said, you know, that was a really weird thing we did, um, not expecting we do that here, plus it wouldn't work out very evenly with 13 members. But what has happened is no one here knows what agenda setting looks like. It's been a year. We, I brought this up when we had the election. There was no attempt to include other people in agenda setting. Now, obviously, can't have a bunch of us there. But that kind of thing is the kind of thing I wanted to be able to talk about in this conversation. It's not about personalities. It's about everybody's running around trying to do things super fast and get things done. But what are we losing by doing that? And I don't feel that the vice president job should always be the trajectory to the president. It could be 
a different role. Yes, lots of professional organizations, of course. You have your first vice president, your second vice president, and everybody knows that's how it works and that's just how it is. Or they just rotate president automatically, which I think is a terrible idea because some people are really lousy presidents and so <laughs> we shouldn't necessarily rotate that. And that's not everybody's skill set or desire or time commitment. But what I'm looking for is, even though it's awkward to have the conversation, perhaps not even necessarily to fix anything for now, but as we continue to move forward to say, how can we check in with each other? And it doesn't have to be at a retreat because we can't really take any more additional meetings at this point in our lives, but to, have a, to be able to talk about how do other people get included in doing things because there are clearly people who feel like they haven't been able to get the committees they've wanted. Obviously, someone's going to be unhappy always with that, unfortunately, no matter how people try and manage that. But also just what is happening. And so what is happening with agenda setting in terms of what are upcoming ideas? I will say, having been in town government since 1999, we get less notice of what we're doing on any individual agenda than the select board did and then town meeting did. We are less transparent to our own members than we were under the former form of government, which is bizarre, because everybody's working really hard and racing around, but I don't see us finding our way to making that. So those are the kinds of things I would like us to think about and try and improve on, and what are different ways we could help. We don't want to put all the burden on the president and vice president. I, the final thing I just want to touch on is that the charter is far more prescriptive as to what the vice president does now wasn't on the Charter Commission, so I don't know why they chose to do that, than the Old Town Government Act was. But it does say preside, which to me means if the president's going to miss a meeting, the vice president presides. It does not in any way, shape, or fashion in the English language mean that if the president can't give the remarks at the Memorial Day Parade, it's automatically the vice president who does it. When I was on the select board, we said, who wants to do Veterans Day? Who wants to do Black History Month? We could include other people. We could give them the responsibility to represent us rather than it always being the president and vice president. It doesn't have to be that way, even though the charter says preside if you miss a meeting. So I'm just asking us to think about it in a more open way. Dorothy. Um, I do think that that sometimes efficiency has drawbacks. And I think right now it's a very efficient use of the vice president. But what it does is it precludes any thoughts of something being different. It's kind of like the vice president is the president in training. And I don't, I didn't really think about that when, when we had the vote uh, that much. I just thought, okay, that's the vice president. And I thought we we're going to get different officers at some point in the future. Um, just probably because the officers might burn themselves out. So I do agree that the vice president's role should be not as a mini-me to the president, but um, that the duty should be spread more. I, I agree with some of the things that Alyssa said, um, although I do see that this is part of it. Probably it's been continued this way because of the burden of work and are trying to get things done in a, in a kind of a quicker, more efficient way. But Maybe after one year, we can um, spread our wings just a little bit and spread things around. Okay. Darcy? Um, I guess I would, I would agree with Alyssa and some of her thoughts about um, equalizing some of the responsibilities, rotating uh, jobs among us, and um, I think that, um, you know, last year when we had our vote, we talked about what's the role of the vice president, and we didn't really have any experience at that time as to what it could be. Um, so I actually, I'm interested in hearing from Mandy Jo uh, about what does she do? What are all those things that she does that we don't even know? Um, just to, you know, to give us an idea what her workload is because, you know, she's also a chair of a committee and um, that's a huge job in itself from my perspective. Um, but, and I, I totally appreciate 
all the work both Mandy Jo and Lynn have put in, I'm just in complete awe. Um, but I do also see that, that, that you're doing so much that it would make sense to spread it out among the rest of us, and, and, and some of us would like to learn some of these things, especially around agenda setting. So actually, yes, Mandy, could you tell us all the stuff you do? I want to encourage Mandy Jo to do that in a manner that splits it between being a counselor and being vice president, because the charter and the rules of procedure allow both the president and the vice president to be members of standing committees. The rules of procedure ask that the president not chair a standing committee, which I personally totally agree with, um, but it does not prohibit that for, from the vice president doing that. I also want to point out that um, while the president has the right to appoint people to standing committees, they do not select the chair. The chair is selected by the committee. So um, what may be appearance of favoritism <laughs> isn't a decision of the president or frankly the vice president. So with that, Mandy Jo, I just ask, because having worked with you. So um, I don't know how, in speaking, I will try to separate them as I talk. But um, so over the past year, one of the things the president specifically asked me to do every other week was review the minutes. So I am doing that. I would consider that not as counselor because I think if I was not the vice president, I would not be reviewing the minutes for modifications because I'm not a big fan of reading minutes. <laughs> so that I feel like is a job I've been doing as vice president, reviewing all of the council minutes and getting recommended changes to Athena um, within the time frame they she provides. Um, I have regularly been keeping track of agenda requests in preparation for agenda setting so that I can, I made I think four notes already tonight at tonight's meeting about potential agenda items for coming up so that I can add agenda setting, bring them up um, and make sure things don't go, you know, don't get lost in stuff. Um, I probably, if I wasn't sitting in agenda setting, wouldn't track that as closely. Um, and then obviously I've been going to agenda setting, so I have been participating in that. Um, I have over the course of the last year crafted and helped counselors craft motion language for various motions or various amendments to motions. I have a hard time separating that away from whether that's just something I've been doing as a counselor or something I've been doing as vice president. I can't always tell whether someone's coming to me because I'm vice president or because they think I might have some good advice. <laughs> um, I have, as vice president, stood in for the president in a variety of public events. Some of the list is the library legislative breakfast, all of the Kanagasaki events. Um, the Human Rights Day proclamation reading, um, some of the stuff um, at the state of the town address, um, things like that um, were done at the request of the president because I'm vice president. Um, that happened sometimes on months notice and sometimes on hours notice. Um, I presided over the meetings the president couldn't attend for the council. Um, so that's a role of the vice president. Um, at the president's request, I have been the sort of go-to guidance person on charter. Um, whether that's probably not because I'm vice president, that's probably because I was a member of the charter commission. Um, but I have given a lot of feedback on what the charter says. Um, and sometimes when there's questions as to what the intent of the charter commission was, I have tried to provide answers to that. I have given the president feedback on a wide variety of matters just through email or through meetings when she requested it. 
um, committee assignments when she was making committee assignments last a year ago. She sought my feedback on them and I gave my feedback. Um, I believe that was as a role of vice president, not as counselor. Um, drafts of documents, motions sometimes. I know other counselors are involved in motion language now too, but, um, but not just motions, sometimes resolutions prior to when we had some big stuff going and sometimes on a short-term basis. Um, but other documents that might be going out to the public, sometimes she seeks my um, guidance or you know feedback on something she intends to respond to a email we got from a constituent as the town council and she wants an idea of you know does it sound right am I getting everything things like that um, so I've done that too um, feedback on committee assignments included stuff like did we were they split out to try and even a burden or is one too overburdened one not underburdened, but also things like, did those assignments conform to the charges? And making sure they do conform to the charges and any of the requirements of the charges. Um, you know, that's what I would say is about it that I could come up with when I was thinking about it before this meeting, um, in terms of what I've done generally as vice president. So a lot of sounding board, I, I would say, is is some of it, and then you know, if people are wondering what goes on in agenda setting, it really is just trying to figure out an agenda that might end by 10. Um, what, what needs to come up, what, we are failing miserably. <laughs> you know, what needs to come up, what can, what can be postponed, what, you know, things like that. Can we postpone something tonight to not a later meeting to try and end earlier? Um, how might that look, you know, how might that operate, uh, things like that, um, you know, and as I said, I try to keep track of what people have asked for on an agenda or what things were mentioned at some point and mention them as to could we fit that in some point. Okay. Additional comments, yes, Sarah. I feel like I was also a culprit in wanting to have this discussion. Um, it, I, this is a very I know, healthy I know, discussion, just, to I be just, honest. I know, no, I, I understand that. Yeah. But I, I just, I wanted to share just some thinking about, you know, we've been talking about um, consolidation of power, which is something that at the very first, you know, meeting when we were running, that's something that, that I brought up as we were starting a, a new form of government. And I think that I've had to think really, really hard about what's leadership and then what is power? Um, because when I thought of some things that I thought perhaps were complaints that I might have about like a, a power structure, um, I realized that a lot of the things that had happened were people trying to figure out their role in how to lead 13 people. And while there are some things that I felt was a little grabby or I didn't like, um, in retrospect, when I put, picked all of those things apart, I really felt that the president and the vice president had actually listened to a lot of my complaints and complaining and had not pushed back but had tried to really listen to the things that I had said. And then another thing that, you know, I'm also a person that's going to say I want consistency and I want to make sure that we're all balancing, you know, power. But another thing that I thought of too is that whole adage of there's uh, no small roles, only small actors. And I think that any, any one of us in any given space that we're in, committee or president or vice president, we all have to work together to make a change. So in that, I think, um, I feel like all of us do have a chance to shine. I think that when I think of agenda setting, I, I almost kind of compare it to how everybody felt about the CAFs, not seeing them, not really knowing it. It felt like it was like this additional power that somebody had if they saw it and then when we all got it, we were like, eh, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? So like I, when I'm always like, I don't know what happens in agenda setting. I, I don't, but I'm like you said, I'm not sure 
if sitting in there would help me or, or, or not. But I do think that there are some things that are, are really good to learn because I do think when you're you know, picking somebody for a leadership role, you often ask, well, do you have experience in, in this or that? And, and I think that you know, just saying plainly, hey, could we take a look sometime or is there a way now that things are slowing down for us, we could have a little bit more feedback? I, I think that's something that I would ask for, but I think, I think all of us have to really rethink if we're saying I think that there's certain people that may have more power than others. I think you also have to take a, a step back and see what power you're claiming for yourself and in working with everyone else to make a change or a policy. Yes. I forgot one other thing that I just remembered. You guys were asking for what I did. At the request of the president, I attended a number of meetings at UMass related to various UMass items um, in my role as vice president. Pat. Uh, I want to thank Sarah for what she just said uh, on many levels. Um, I'm concerned about transparency. Um, I am concerned that um, that you've been sitting in, or the vice president has been sitting in meetings pertaining to UMass, um, and I'm not getting information from those meetings. Um, that that if if you're attending the strategic planning meeting, you know, strategic agreement with UMass meeting, I'm not getting any information. And I think some of that responsibility goes out to you, Paul, and to Lynn in terms of calling executive session. So I do feel like there's information that I'm missing as a counselor because there is a kind of closed system. It's not one that I'm judging all that negatively. Uh, it happens a lot. I know who I collaborate well with and who I um, have more problems with, not on the council, in my life. <laughs> I am really talking about my life. Um, but I am concerned um, with, number one, transparency, number two, learning, and also looking at myself um, around what kinds of responsibility am I willing to take on? Am I giving away power? Or do I not want to do some of the work connected with a power position? And I, I am concerned um, on the lack of transparency within the context of this council when people are still saying, well, there's this divide and there's that divide. I, some of the conversations that have occurred over the last week or so around this issue have made me realize that we're still um, some of, that there's a level of distrust that um, mirrors what existed when we first came on the council. And I find that amazingly disappointing. Um, I really do. Um, our job is to work for the town of Amherst. And I do think we need to look at how we rotate uh, the responsibilities of the vice presidency. Um, I think that's critical. Um, I don't want to believe that there is a system in place and that so-and-so is going to be the next person. And, that, and I, I want us to work together. But then I have to look at myself and say, what responsibilities am I honestly willing to take on? Not what responsibilities am I avoiding by saying other people are doing things to me. So that's all I have to say for this second. Okay. Steve. Yeah, so if I may, uh, can you talk more about what these me meetings with UMass are? So I would defer to the president and the town manager to determine whether the content of those meetings is discussable or not. One of the meetings that I did not go to initially, although I have recently been in, is to discuss with the university their approach to the whole P 
P3? P3, uh, which is the public-private partnership that they are using to uh, go out for bid in, in a very unusual way, which um, I'll explain in a moment. Um, for both the dormitories that would be on Mass Ave, at the intersection of Mass Ave and Lincoln Ave, and the uh, married student, or the family and married student housing that will replace West Village. Right. North Village, North Village, thank you. Um, and um, I did attend the second meeting on that. Um, and I bring to it the perspective of having, you know, worked at the university in the president's office and having attended board meetings for my 30 years at the university, 31 years at the university. And what the main thing I learned is the trustees have completely changed the game with housing. And um, they're, they really want more and more P3s because it takes the burden of the financing, if you will, and the risk to some extent off of the institution and puts it on the developer. Um, and, you know, for example, it gave us an opportunity, and this is no surprise because there's been discussions about this, to raise the issue, well, how do the neighbors feel on Lincoln Ave, et cetera, about this kind of development, those kinds of issues. Um, it was basically more informational, and that would be uh, an example. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like uh, there are things, other things that can't be shared here right now, and how do we, as counselors, get the same information that you're getting? And so for me, there maybe perhaps needs to be some regularity of executive sessions or something so we can be filled in uh, so that we can be working as knowledgeably as the rest of, as the three of you. Um, I don't know how practical that is, but it seems to me that, we're, that we are unintentionally being kept from, information is being kept from us that's important information. Andy. I, yeah. I do want to address that, but yeah. Andy, go ahead. I, I, I may be addressing it a little bit. Some of the problem with executive session is, is that uh, Mass General Law and the Open Meeting Law right. is very narrow on what it allows for, uh, for execu executive sessions. And uh, so that there's a lot of things that we would be interested in knowing about, but we either have to do it public or not do it at all, and to not uh, because of the open meeting law. And then you get into the question, well, if you do it in public, um, what is it doing to the um, integrity of the relationship that is behind the discussion? In this case, we're talking, of course, about the university and some very particular things. That will they not have the same discussion? So that's one thing that, um, does get in our way for, and we just have to comply with what the law tells us we have to do. Um, I think that the other thing that I um, think about, and Melissa keep, triggered this right at the beginning, yes, the select board did act differently. We did rotate the vice presidency. We, um, there were two factors that were different. One was, that it was a five-person board, not a 13-member council. The other is that, um, uh, I don't know how to say this politely, so I'll just go ahead and say it anyway. We were an extraordinary group. There was a level of trust amongst the five of us who were in that role for the um, last years that there was a select board. And it allowed us to get through a lot of things, including, um, getting Paul to come to Amherst. But um, I'm not sure that a slightly different composition of that five-person board would have made that whole relationship that we developed, including the rotating vice chair, work not as well. So they're just, I think that it is really difficult to take us back. I don't think we can go back, uh, though I sometimes miss it as much as Alyssa does. 
uh, and actually Andy has explained uh, as recently as the last two months, um, I probed every way possible to take one item to executive session and it just didn't pass muster. And so there was nothing I could do. And, and that's something, that's a learning issue for me, it's a learning issue for other counselors uh, as to um, what, you know, the law says. I, I have a, other comments, but not right now, go ahead. Uh, I appreciate uh, the complexity of it. Um, but if there are meetings that Mandy or the vice president is attending, why isn't that being rotated with other counselors? Mm -hmm. and I that hear that as something a, maybe creatively yeah. we could begin to think mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Steve? Yeah. So, uh, I'll comment, but I think because the vice president is really only defined to sit on the, basically to sit in for the president when the president's unavailable, primarily for council meetings, I, I think, I think this idea of rotating, you know, in other words, that because the president can't do everything that's asked of her. Thank you. And the, you know, the vice president seems to be doing an amazing job, but it just seems like to, you know, sort of increase the knowledge base and the leadership potential that, mm -hmm. you know, going into year two, that's a great strategy. Right. I will say that I've, t I've thought about this, obviously, since the last time we met. I refused, however, to let it dominate my own personal life and holidays. So give me a little applause for that one. Thank you very much, mom and dad. Uh, but uh, so one of those, you know, that's a wonderful suggestion. You know, I can't make something, uh, or frankly, I don't want to make something. And somebody's much more wed to an issue, and you go out and stand on the front steps, and you be the person that starts the, um, the, you know, starts the comments and starts the commemorations, or you go to the library thing uh, that happens to be the um, um, local political uh, types, the state rep and the state president, the president of the, the state senator. Um, so those are, that's one thing. I will tell you that even a year ago, I suggested, and Paul is going to shoot me, just so you all know, just so you know. I suggested that once a month, a different counselor come to agenda place setting. And we never got anywhere with that, but I'm going to raise it again, because it just gives you a little insight. It's probably going to add a little time because you're going to want to ask questions that the background was three meetings ago. And some of you may not even be interested in that. I really want to respect something Pat said, and that is, what am I willing to take on? What, what responsibilities am I willing to take on? And so I'm open to these suggestions. I um, spent a lot of my career um, working with all kinds of people and developing my skills as well as theirs. Um, so I have no problem with uh, trying to figure out and working with you all on how some of that can be done in a better way. I will say that this year has been amazing. Uh, I think I anticipated how much time it was going to take, and maybe it wouldn't have taken somebody else as much time, and maybe somebody else wouldn't have done the same job. Uh, but um, it's how I do jobs like this. It, to me, it was a huge startup, and that's the way I took it on. So and now we're at the end of one year, or a little bit past the one year, a good point of one year and it's time to make some mid-course corrections. We're no longer in a total startup mode. We are in a, you know, let's refine it. And frankly, one of the things I want to refine it for is to make it a job, all of, the jo all of our jobs, all of our counselor jobs, a much more doable job so that other people would even think about running for this job. 
because a lot of people right now look at it and say, well, I guess I couldn't do that unless I'm retired or worked part-time or you know, was willing to give up some other major portion of my life. So uh, I'm more than willing to have us continue this conversation, to hear your comments individually or uh, as a group, um, and, or we can move on. Evan. So I'm gonna try and cogently put a bunch of thoughts together. Um, I think that one of the conversations that we started with last year was, is the vice president simply sort of, as Steve said, as defined in the charter, just there to preside when the president isn't there or the vice president and the president a team? And I think that was a big division of opinion when we had the first election on December 3rd, uh, 2018. Um, and it's not one that I necessarily had an opinion of at the time. Um, listening to Mandy Jo talk about all of the things she's she's done, it made me think that I spent this past weekend with a, with a friend who is uh, chief of staff to a New York City counselor, which means that New York City counselors have chiefs of staff, paid chiefs of staff, <laughs> which is incredible. He has a full-time job that is to be chief of staff to well, a city chief counselor. chief of staff, please come out. <laughs> so that would be great. Not saying that we're New York City, but sometimes it feels like the workload is the same. They also have a 40 member, 54 member council. But anyways, um, and so what I'm thinking of is in many ways, what Mandy Jo is describing are responsibilities that she would have, that she would probably not have if we had staff, but we don't. And I don't think that anyone's making the case that we need fully funded 13 staff members. Um, and so thinking about that and thinking about the responsibilities of the president, I don't have, I have less of an issue with the president and vice president being a, a team and having the president delegate some of these responsibilities to the vice president and work closely together. I do like the idea of on occasion distributing some of those responsibilities out, but I also want to point out that I think that's happened on occasion. I, I, I was, uh, really humbled that when we had the Pride Month declaration that the president said, Pat and Evan, you two wrote this, you read it. You raised the flag and the president stepped aside. When it came to uh, the regional assessment, uh, we recognized that really the most qualified to speak on that was Andy, and so Andy did that. And so I, I, I want to acknowledge that this has happened on occasion. Um, it's just now we're sort of recognizing that that's happened and continuing it. Um, but when it comes to, and I, and I agree with Steve, I think leadership development is the key thing. But to me personally, the leadership development is, the place for that is in the committees. Um, and so, you know, I, I know just in the past year, um, I've changed quite a bit having to all of a sudden chair OCA, um, which was a lot more work than I expected um, and a lot more pressure. And, you know, I think that sort of the, the committees are where a lot of this leadership development could occur, so I, I'm not too worried about it with the vice presidency. Uh, Dorothy. Just a quick thought. Uh, if enough of us are going to the MMA, that would present us an, a possibility of having some kind of meeting in which we talked about this more. No. No? That's a public meeting. Well, you can invite the public. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it has to be in a location convenient to the public that you serve. <laughs> Sorry. Nice try. Yes, Sarah. So when we first talked about this a year ago, and I, I think that, you know, we did talk a little bit about, you know, will the president or vice president have responsibilities that bring them, you know, up and, and over? the rest of us. And I think, you know, originally it sort of sounded like, well, no, probably not. And I think that it's been tried to have it not be. I think that what we're recognizing is, is that there are some things that, you know, will bring the president and vice president. There will at times get more information than the rest of us will for, we're finding different situations where that happens. Um, and that may just be, as we're finding this form of government, how that leadership actually happens. So, I mean, I think we have to take a look at what our practical experience was during this year and practically trying to lead the town council and to try to put together agendas. Should we look at um, other roles that 
the vice president had or that helped. And then I think we should then say, I, maybe we should sit down and say, here are things that happened. I think maybe we want to consider putting those things in. Or we want to have a further discussion, the fact that it really hit me when Mandy Jo was talking about the things that she was doing, is that the two of you have worked as a team, especially this first year when we didn't really know what we were doing. We had to, we had to really put process in place that wasn't there. So I could see that you know there was that support. I don't know the answer to this, but I guess I'm just really thinking, um, how does that play out uh, further down the line? And, and I don't have an answer to that, but I'm wondering if in committees, will we see people just doing a really good job and having somebody that naturally is their helpmate? I don't know. I mean, I don't, at, at this point, in the beginning, I thought that having the vice president have more of a role was absolutely negative. I think maybe knowing, being more upfront about what the role has become would be good. And then I do think that this council itself, because we're the very first one, needs to talk about how does it play out if a president and a vice president are helpmates as far as um, how that would, how we would maybe get a new president or a vice president. I just think it's something that we need to be cognizant of. I am cognizant of the time. Are there any final comments people want to make on this? Alyssa. I just want to point out that some of the, I mean, some of this conversation we had already and people weren't receptive to it then and now they're receptive to it now. So yay, we've made progress. Um, but we're not mostly saying new things. Um, one of the other things to keep in mind is that we very much underutilize the concept of confidential emails from the town manager. Those are not public records subject, and we could do more of those if the town manager trusted us not to leak the information, which he has to do. So we have to be worthy of that trust. So we have to not tell the press and not tell our friends, et cetera. But that is a, a way of finding out that conversations are taking place because we can be updated by that person and then there's no risk of serial communication like there would be for another. And the other is associated with agenda setting. We'd be far sub quorum um, as opposed to the, and, and let's remember that rotation far preceded the incredibly well-functioning select board. It was a rotation that was being done by a very dysfunctional select board, but they liked it too for different reasons. Um, but again, 13 is not gonna work. But you could have three people at agenda setting and this would not be a problem. Of course, obviously, it's just more space and time and questions as was very well put. The thing that we've also been asking for for a year and have seen a couple of occasions is there's a document, at least one, that gets used at agenda setting. I don't have any idea why the rest of us aren't getting copies of that document. So we have a sense of what's coming up, what's happening, what we think we're doing three months from now, what we think we're doing three right. weeks from now. That's, it's simple, it's not simple to do, I've done it. it. What I'm saying is it's not an expression of opinion. So it is a working document, it's not a secret, and I don't see any reason why it couldn't be shared with the rest of us, because then we'd all have a better sense of, oh, we're planning to talk about that then, not now, so maybe I'll save my other idea for then, and et cetera, et cetera. And we've been asking for that for a long time, and that's not been something that's been able to be happening. Additional comments at this time? Darcy. I, I agree with uh, Alyssa's comments there. And um, I think that um, the issue around the, all the duties of, and the tasks taken on by the vice president isn't so much the long list that M Mandy Jo t just told us about, but the combination of that amount of um, influence with the fact that she's also chair of CRC and she's on JCPC and she's on GOL, former chair of GOL. And um, so that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of, the, of, of um, power, basically. And, and it's not that she has exercised it in any kind of bad way, um, but it's just, I think the principle of the thing as far as 
looking at the future of the council and how we want to organize ourselves and how we want to spread out some of these things. So some of those things that Mandy Jo does all the time, hopefully I'm hearing um, can get spread out. And as far as like agenda setting, attending meetings, attending public events, you know, so that we all feel like we're being included and, and, um, and getting some leadership opportunities. Okay, Sarah. So I just wanna say that, that um, in, I'm just gonna say in Mandy Jo's defense, as Lynn said, we pick our own committee chairs and I believe that there are many places in which Mandy Jo has been put into a position of power because other counselors have trusted her or have looked to her for expertise. And so while I do agree that there are things like the vice president that you know maybe we want to rotate duties and whatever, there's an idea of fairness. And then there is also you have to put in there, can the person that you are nominating, can they, are they up to the job? Because we can all want to be trained, but we all have to have the aptitude to do a certain job. Any other comments? All right, I'm, I'm Liz, sorry, Kathy. I, I have it as a question, so mm -hmm. I don't actually have an answer. Um, if, if we weren't this specific group, if we're talking about a council a few years from now, would it be healthier for councils to say that vice presidents serve for a year and then we do another vice president. And I realize we all are doing elections. Does, is that healthier or is it better for our institution that we form a team and the team stays together? And I'm asking it for leadership issues, for other pieces, and I don't have a strong answer on that. Um, you know, certainly we don't for the President of the United States switch off on vice presidents very often. But that's a different situation and we don't elect them separately either. We, they, they come as a team and there is no choice. So it's just a, it's a, has been a question in my mind and I have no idea what has happened in other councils. Um, what I have seen is that whoever starts tends to stay. There's a certain inertia because people learn the job. Um, and, you know, unless they're really incompetent, uh, people get to trust their leaders, which good, you want good leaders to rise up to the top. So I, I don't know the answer to that um, as an institution, and we're just in year one. I, I want to mention something that became to my attention. I honestly didn't know this during the charter debate. But there was a debate within the charter as to whether or not the president of the council should be restricted to an at-large counselor. And I personally feel that the more you restrict, the more you tie your hands. So I really don't personally like the idea. In fact, the reality is we elect once every year and we continue to do that. And that's what I was saying. I was just, yeah. I wasn't, we, we can elect whomever we want to, so we can have continuity. Right. That's a choice. Right. Dorothy? Well, I just want to, I, th I think we're kind of winding down on this, but when people talk to me about the council, they say things to me, which I'm sure they say to you, which is they're aware of how hard we're working. They're amazed at how hard we're working. They don't complain about our decisions. They wish we didn't spend so much time on process. Um, I mean, they really do talk about that, and they talk about our long meetings, but the fact is, we've done very well. And I, but I think now it is a special time, it is the, our first year, and it's been some incredible crazy year that we can think about kind of spreading things around a little bit more and equalizing the load, and I see that that's one of the things behind some of the committee suggestions, which um, I was a little surprised by. So much is going on that um, I'm often quite surprised by what has happened until I, you know, get my packet and I say, oh my God, there's been a lot happening here. But I think we, we keep on top, but I think we have to keep fresh. We've got two years more in this sprint and we've got people who are begging us to run for re-election because they're afraid that we've done, the, the job has seemed so hard that no regular person will want to do it. 
So we have to make it easier and look like we're having more fun. <laughs> All right. I, would, I want to point out that we say Pat, thing. yes. Um, one of the things that I was afraid of when we started uh, and was that the vice president and the president would you know, have more power than everybody else. I don't feel that. And I particularly um, am getting that cleared away even more by listening to you uh, working together as a team um, and seeing what, is man what are Mandy Jo's strengths being utilized by another strong woman who brings her, uh, is you know, her issues and her concerns and her strengths. Any two people working together form a team. And if Mandy Jo weren't vice president this next time around, a new team would be established. If Lynn weren't president this next time around, a new team would be established. We need to stop being afraid of the team as long as they're listening and responding to us. Any other comments? All right. I would like suggestions at this point. We have the following items, some of which may still take a bit of conversation. The town manager's goals, the amendment to the rules of procedure, rule 10.5. I do not see that as a big discussion item. And I also understand that um, in order for, um, uh, Oka, thank you, to proceed, they would like this ruled on. Uh, the uh, master plan, Mandy Jo and I did discuss this in advance, and she promises that it would j be just an introduction, and it would only be for the purposes of making sure we understand what's discussed, and then next time we'd have a full, more full discussion. Uh, the proposed reorganization of standing committees, governance organization, and legislative committees, et cetera. First discussion. Um, that is not going to be short. Um, we can take it on tonight or not. Uh, proposed committee liaisons. Uh, this is really just the issue of which ones, not who, right? Okay. <coughs> and then at midnight tonight, um, <laughs> I'm no longer president. Mandy Jo is no longer vice president unless you decide to have an election, which you can have for one more week or for one more month or whatever you want. So can I ask, are there suggestions as to things you feel we could delay until the 27th of January? Evan. So two of these items are from OCA. And so I, I'll speak to them. Uh, rule 10.5H uh, absolutely needs to be done tonight. Yep. Um, that cannot wait. Uh, liaisons, I think, um, as far as I'm concerned, there's no pressing need um, for us to decide this. Okay. Um, and so um, I, I don't, the committee hasn't discussed the timing of this, but my personal belief is that there's no rush on liaisons. Okay. Other comments? Andy. If we can, we should try and finish town manager goals before the year's up. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know why you're saying that. We're only halfway through. Um, okay. Others? Yes, I, I George. Think the, the, the GOL discussion will take up a fair amount of time. I would like to at least have something to say about tonight, but perhaps we would be wise to postpone it for um, a time when we have more time to give to it, but I think something should be said um, before we leave this evening. Okay. But uh, that's certainly not something that's pressing um, and would take up a fair amount of time. Okay. All right, with that in mind, with the managers decided to leave the room, anybody have anything to say about the goals? <laughs> uh, let me just, let's go on to the goals. Um, the, and I guess what the committee wants to know is whether you're gonna send us back yet again. Uh, we uh, had a discussion about the goals last time. We asked uh, all council members to give us any feedback about the goals individually, which they did to me. I collected those in a manner that you see on a very messy sheet of paper with lots and lots and lots of notes to the side. It includes everything we were given. Um, six counselors weighed in. 
The committee then met on January 2nd and again went back to trying to keep it to the rules of what's doable, what's measurable, and particularly in this time frame. And they came forward with a recommendation of goals that is also included in your packet. So we could have another discussion about those goals. We could have you give us additional information about those goals. I will tell you that um, we tried to at least um, do what we could, but where, when it got to the point of being too detailed, we also felt that that got to the point of being more of a checklist and not necessarily a, um, a goal of giving the town manager. And that particularly was true for um, the economic development. So we included an economic development goal, but we made it very broad. So it, does not, it did not include the detail at level. So with that in mind, let's have a general discussion. Yep, Evan. So I want to first thank the committee for their work because I know that it's hard to take 13 counselors, individual ideals, goals, priorities, and try to come up with a, a document. Uh, that said, I, I will personally say that I was fairly disappointed in the final document that I saw. Um, and there, there are two places where I really want to express some, some fairly severe disappointment. The first is, um, you know, there are some fairly meaty issues in front of the council today. Um, GOL provided us a report, OCA provided you a report, CRC provided a report, the Intermunicipal CCA Task Force provided a report, all of which described the decisions and the deliberations. Uh, we're being asked to vote on a fairly big document that has no accompanying committee report. Uh, we were provided with all of the comments. Um, and what I'm seeing here is there are many comments, the vast majority of comments were not included in the final document. And I have no idea why, because there's no discussion of the deliberation. Uh, specifically, uh, Mandy Jo had some very specific questions that were asked about some of these that were never addressed or answered. And I don't know if they were, I am assuming they were discussed, but I don't know what the answers are. Right. And so, you know, I know when, uh, speaking from the perspective of OCA, when OCA asked for counselor feedback and received it, uh, we provided the council with nine pages of responses with a response to every comment, every question asked, so that people knew that their, their comments and their feedback were actually considered and why or why not uh, or why they were or were not included. Okay. Uh, having not had that, I don't know how I can vote on this document because there are unanswered questions and I have no idea why some things were considered and one, some weren't. So um, for me personally, I won't vote on this document tonight because okay. I don't know why these decisions were made. The second area of disappointment was on economic development, uh, which I had raised last meeting as something that I would hoped would be divided into its own section. Um, and I was happy to see that it was. And then I read the actual goals and found them to be rather pitiful and milk toast. Um, and I don't know what we heard from the town manager uh, last time when I believe it was Pat who asked sort of his opinion of these goals. And Paul gave us a very diplomatic answer um, that said that his, his preference is to see goals that are specific and measurable. Um, where, w what divides a checklist versus a specific and measurable goal I think is tough, um, but suggest other ideas or actions with potential for Amherst is not specific, it is not measurable, it is nothing. It says absolutely nothing. It gives the town manager no guidance. I don't know how I can ever evaluate that. Assess the need for an economic development committee. Don't know what that means and in all of the comments I saw, I never saw economic development committee. So I'm not even really sure where that came from. Um, and I already know Paul's opinion of an economic development committee, so that'll be easy for him. Um, and then there was one thing that was just basically carried over from the previous one. And so I'm happy to see an economic development section. I wish it actually said something, because it doesn't. Um, then I'm looking at the, the thing, Shalini and I both presented lots of recommendations for an economic development section. Um, perhaps some people felt they were too specific. I think some of them weren't that specific, and I don't think some of them 
I think some of them were very rational, including things like meeting with the university about how to leverage uh, technology transfer in their capital, things about figuring out marketing and working with the economic development director. I don't know why they didn't get in here, because there's no report. Um, but to me, what this says is, we're going to pretend that economic development is a priority, but it isn't. Because we have some fairly detailed things about other things, and yet nothing about economic development. This is not an economic development goal section. Jesus. Um, let me just say, I feel that we do owe you a report. And maybe the best thing is for the committee to just go back and meet and do that. And look again with a little more time to the economic development section. Kathy? Pat? Uh, Darcy, you were the other person at the meeting, right? Um, I have. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. <laughs> that was wonderful. Um, I want to go to section 1B. Um, determine financially sustainable strategies to meet core services needs to uh, meet core service needs in all departments. And in this final document, it waters down the fire and EMS um, provision, uh, it, which originally in earlier drafts said assess need develop plan and take steps to address fire and EMT staffing. And now it's review operations of the fire and EMS to assess need for all services and determine appropriate staffing levels. It doesn't say anything about really creating a plan. A plan is not putting it on your wish list in the budget um, in case money falls from the sky. It is really developing a plan and, and that addresses the fact that um, we do not have adequate staffing. And, Okay, Alyssa. So from the very minor point that, for example, something like continue the transition to the new form of government remains in here, which makes zero sense to me because like, that's like saying, come to work in the morning. I mean, I have no idea how we would evaluate that. He's going to write up a paragraph in his thing that says, I keep working on the transition. Like, what? We've had the transition. It's done. Anything that we missed, anything that we didn't do, because you know we didn't have a chart that told us what to do, um, anything that we missed, he can add on as, look, we did this thing, great. And again, not having a report that says why that has to remain in there, I don't know. I'm going to just hypercritically go back to what I said when this whole thing came up. You guys have spent a ton of time on this, why? I said, have one person sit down, write the goals, bring it back to the group, we'll all throw all our spaghetti at the wall and we'll say, yep, nope, yep, nope, and it'll be over. You guys have met like a million times. You don't have time to go write another report that explains all of this. Just, we have the thing with all the notes, which is really cool that somebody put all that together. Thank you, that's like a report. Let us send you some edits and just get this over with because I don't really want to read a paragraph about why somebody thinks it's essential to continue the phrase, continue the transition to the councilman. Whatever, man. Like, just cross that out and I'll get something else I want or I'll get the fire uh, thing that's in there. These are things that we have to be able to have an evaluation instrument for. If it doesn't make sense for an evaluation instrument, it doesn't belong in here. We can have like a, like a prologue or something if we want to do that in terms of ge generic ideas. But this is, this is not just goals, this is a performance evaluation. This is the performance evaluation. We don't know what the form's gonna look like, but that's what this is. So let's just like, get going. Dorothy. Uh, I could see doing that, but um, I'll tell you my objective. I thought it was, I really did not like the evaluation system. I thought it was micromanaging. I thought it was actually demeaning. And it was just a checklist of do this, do that, do this, do that. And I thought, what person can actually do all of those things, do them well, and, and maintain sanity? So I think that if we want to all do what Alyssa suggests, fine. But understand, if it ends up being like the last one with a thousand things that are impossible to do, it will not, it'll be a, a useless document. Other comments? So 
this is what I've heard. Uh, you want one more round of comments and edits. You would like a written report that tells you what the committee discussion was. And um, then there was a specific comment on the goal with regard to EMS fire and a specific comment on the overall economic development. And the final one was on the very last one, relationship to the town council D, feeling like it was, should just be eliminated. Are there any other comments or feedback you'd like to give us at this point or wait until you do it online? Andy. Okay. I'm not gonna actually respond to any of the comments that were made because if we start getting going down that path, we're gonna be here all night. Right. And, um, you know, I didn't necessarily agree with everything I heard, but I appreciated hearing it. And I think that we just have to, if those are the key things, find a way to just send emails to the president and uh, wherever he or she may be. And um, let's, uh, and then they can balance out the uh, uh, various comments received and make judgments as to how to go forward. Okay. Anything else? All right, then let's move on to D, which is the second reading, and it's an amendment to the Rules of Procedure Rule 10.5H regarding public comment on special meetings. George. So, um, do you have the uh, document in front of you, I hope? Um, there's really only one change. We talked about it last time. We want to insert the word regular um, in item H. So it would be regular meetings of, um, uh, would be, right. So I have nothing to add to this. Um, we felt that the, uh, in the report that I've given you, um, you have the uh, rationale um, spelled out. Um, a regular meeting was understood by the committee to be any meeting which is listed in that committee's yearly calendar. Um, and so we didn't feel that was the particular issue. And I think you all understand that the, the reason behind this um, is to allow uh, the, the chair at a particular, uh, specially called meeting that involves interviewing applicants, gives the chair the opportunity or the right to simply not have public comment. It doesn't mean that you can't have public comment at a meeting, uh, but it simply gives them the option. So um, uh, that's what you have in front of you. There really hasn't been any change to it. This is the second reading. Uh, the rationale is in front of you. Um, so what are people's thoughts? Is there a motion, Kathy? I, are you making a motion? I just have a question. If, if this change is mainly because of the interview process, mm -hmm. right? Why wouldn't we just say committees, meetings, except for meetings to interview? Shall. I think the, the issue was to make it as generic as possible, which therefore it applies to all committees. So that there, when a regular committee, when a, um, it, it allows the, this, the committees to have the same parallel language as the council has. Special meetings of the council do not require public comment. Okay, cause so we have accepted this we don't have public comment in special meetings? Special meetings of the council do not require it. Don't it we? doesn't, it means we can have it, but okay. it doesn't require it. And this makes this language parallel. Okay. So and any committee that's holding a special meeting can decide not to have public comment. And an ad hoc committee could decide to not or do it, or are they, a, do ad hoc committees have regular committee meetings. You know, I'm just trying to figure out, are we, you know, how broad is this if we make this change? So does that mean an ad hoc committee of public comes, we could say no public comments? So I assume it, this applies to standing committees only. Mandy Jo. So um, the charter only requires regular council meetings to have public comment. That's so it's not a rule, it's part of the charter, which is why in council meetings, it's only regular council meetings that are required to. But I wanted to address the other one. Um, CRC's got a retreat scheduled for February 3rd, um, where we're basically just gonna be discussing a whole bunch of stuff without any business going on. And it might be nice for CRC not to have to have 
public comment on the agenda at that extended meeting. So if you made a change that was more specific to only appointments, that wouldn't allow CRC to not put public comment on that. Um, and in fact, as the meeting is currently drafted, it has public comment. It likely will not if this amendment goes through. This is broader. I mean, it was written, we need, the urgency is because of interviews, but it's right. meant to be broader. That's correct. Are there other comments on this, Alyssa? It's definitely meant to be broader. It's definitely meant to apply to both standing and ad hoc council committees. Okay. That's why it's in this section. It is supposed to parallel the charter. As I said last time, there is no, no definition of what regular means. George is assuming it means that you already published a list of your meetings, but nobody's required to publish a list of their meetings, so regular can mean anything. I would say let's go with it broad for exactly things like a retreat, exactly things like interviews. If it turns out that people are saying, seems to me that such and such council committee is only having these special meetings and they're not having any public comp, then we can reevaluate. Right. Yeah. Darcy. So uh, when I look back at the last year, we had 17 special meetings. Um, Most of those were, I would call them orientation meetings for the council. Um, we did a lot in that very first month, of, well, the second month of January. During January, we probably had four or five orientation sessions, which we called special meetings because basically we were just listening to FIRE tell us about FIRE EMS. I just worry about uh, making the default uh, no, you know, no public comment. Um, I, again, I'd rather I, be specific about. I was say no. I, I, I think Am the I issue that I, I think what Alyssa has said is, if we feel that we're hearing, gee, you know, all they ever do is call special meetings, that's a problem. But if you know, if a, a committee has ongoing regular meetings every Wednesday at 8.30, and there's always public comment, then they decide, that committee decides to have a retreat, and they decide not to have public comment. It doesn't mean it's not a public meeting. It's a special meeting, they decide not to have public comment. That's what you're trying to allow for. I guess I would just err uh, air on the side of having public comment on just about any, just about any meaning. Um, so, yeah, I was, I've been thinking about it ever since it was in that Mass Live article. <laughs> I don't know if you all saw that. Um, but um, I, I, I would err on the other side of just having public comment in all situations. Okay. Additional, uh, Lisa. If I could just pipe in one more time about retreats. I hate retreats, in case anybody didn't know that. I didn't know hate, that. Hate, 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 hate them. But I will tell you that if you have public comment at a retreat, because been there, done that, it, it changes the tone of the entire retreat. You might as well just go home at that point, because you can have somebody come in and completely derail, and everybody's just like, you know, I was giving up a Saturday for this. So it's not necessary. And Absolutely, regular meetings are public comment. We all expect that all of our regular standing committee meetings do have public comment. It's just that we're trying to give ourselves some room here. We can always pull it back if we need to. Are there other comments on this? Pat? I just want to say that you can have a special meeting, it can be a retreat, and you can say, I'm going to have public comment. Right. So it doesn't rule it out. It just rules it out for a group that doesn't want to have it that time. It allows you to rule it out. Thank it you. doesn't mean you have to rule it out. All it does is allow you to rule it out. Are there any other questions or comments? All right, uh, George, the I'm motion. prepared to make a motion. Yep. I move to amend, that we amend the Town Council Rules of Procedure, Rule 10H, by adding the word regular, so that the rule reads, Regular committee meetings shall provide for a period of public comment. Is there a second? So just 10.5H, I think it was just missing the five. Typo? Yeah, 10.5H. 10.5H, yeah. Okay, <laughs> friendly amendment. 
seconded. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. One opposed. So it was 11-1-0. Okay. Um, master plan. Mandy Jo, just give us a sense of what you're trying to accomplish here, and we'll have a further discussion next time. So yes, um, on the 18th of November, the council voted to direct the CRC, working jointly with the planning board, to recommend a process for update, updating and adopting the master plan in accordance with Charter Section 9.8. That process is located in the memorandum dated December 18th to the town council, um, starting on page two and going to page three, the end of the page. Um, we have talked to the planning board. I attended a planning board meeting. We have received feedback from the planning board on this process. I requested of the president that I be allowed to present it tonight because it requires two discussions and the planning board has indicated that they really would like some guidance, formal guidance from the council before really delving into it. Um, and so if we did not start the reading period here, we would be delaying it even farther. Um, so that's why I requested it. The process really tries to just follow the charter requirements. Um, so it does say, the one thing I will point out, you know, is sort of number one and two. Um, the CRC is recommending that we do not just adopt the Amherst Master Plan as is. Um, that we, we as CRC voted to recommend that it be updated prior to the town council adopting it. One of the options was to recommend adopt as is, and then we'd be done. Um, we would have fulfilled our charter requirement. Um, but CRC did not believe that was a viable option at this time, a decade after it was approved by the planning board. And so number two talks about what CRC is recommending the town council essentially request um, what updates. Um, and we came up with a wording of um, necessary and obvious. Um, this is not an intention to recommend to the manager and the planning board that this be a wholesale revision or a thorough, real big rewrite. This is really an intention to say, you know, it's been 10 years. There's probably things the town's adopted that might need to be included in the master plan now. The change of government's happened. Maybe we can update some references. Um, one of the things staff kept pointing out to CRC was sustainability is probably not as present in the master plan as it could be, um, including some of the language that was used 10 years ago is not always used nowadays relating to sustainability and climate change, and new language has been adopted, and so that could be updated. Um, beyond that, the one big request we got from the planning board from our initial process to this process was that we move the council comment period and the CRC referral, so when the CRC discusses what to recommend on to whether adopt, to adopt um, the master plan to before the planning board approves the amendments formally. Um, it creates a little weird thing of they, we would provide that feedback so that it happens if, they, if we're requesting any changes prior to their initial approval. Um, so that when it comes back to us after approval per the charter, there may not need to be any changes. We may have already requested all of the potential changes we want as a council. Um, and so that then we can sort of streamline the once they approve it to our adopting it process. Um, and so that's outlined sort of in essentially number four and five. Um, the charter is written such that we as a council have to hold a hearing after the planning board approves the master plan. So despite doing much of the review by the council before the planning board approves the master plan, there will still be one public hearing after the master plan approves it because of that. So that's the reason there's that one thing in there. Um, and then the adoption. Um, I'm happy to try and answer questions um, or let the committee field questions if they feel it. I tried to put as much into the memo as possible on our thinking, and you guys will see it in another three weeks, potentially for a vote. Are there questions? 
Yes, Alyssa. As someone who served on the committee for a very long time, including nearly three years as chair of what eventually got sent forward to the planning board, I have a vested interest in that document. And thousands of hours, hundreds of people were involved well beyond, some people cherry pick and talk about surveys and there were other, many, many other ways of inputting. I really like the very basic approach you're taking from the standpoint of let's update like the really egregiously bad things and let's leave the rest alone. And so I'm please encouraging us, please let's not try and micromanage the master plan. It cost us over a quarter million dollars to develop that master plan. I'm not saying that means we need to keep it like it's perfect, No, not by any stretch. Right. But before we get into a whole nother process, let's do this basic update and then say, okay, this is what we've got. Now what's gonna need to be fixed later? Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good approach. It kind of meets Great. in the middle. Further comments? Uh, yes, Kathy. Um, I just had a question, Mandy. I also liked this approach a lot. And w as the planning board is coming up with the necessary and obvious, or the essential and obvious, um, they'll have a working list in your timeline um, before they come up with a final list. If the timing on that um, comes to when we have to do an annual hearing, an annual discussion, it might be useful to think of that preliminarily working list is is part of it, even though it's not final. So people have an initial insight of what that list might look like before they see it in final. So it's just a two-step, knowing that we're not voting on it. So I couldn't, I wasn't sure from the timeline whether you envisioned that, but it seems like a nice way for people to say, oh, I see an I'm not sure why that's necessary, or there's another obvious one that you could just pick up some things. And I see the planning board is also doing hearings, so I'm thinking I'm not trying to create extra work, but if we have to do one, or, and we have to do a forum, might as well work that into it. Comment? I, I don't know that it requires one. Okay. Any other comments on this? Okay, then this will serve as the first reading. We will then move to a second discussion of this and uh, the planning board has asked the town council to basically have a motion and agree that this is how we're going to proceed. And I have to say I have just deep respect for the planning board and understand their desire to be in sync with our, it, our uh, desires as well. So with that, let's move on to um, the proposed reorganization of standing committees. George. That's uh, for GOL. So um, you have two documents in your packet. One of them is the memo to you from the chair, which describes in some detail um, what we're proposing and some of the rationale behind the, the change, proposed changes. You have a much more elaborate uh, set of documents in an item called GOL Standing Committee Restructuring Proposal. So those are the two principal documents that um, you should have uh, in front of you or at least that you want to reference. Um, in my comments, I try to give the uh, council a sense of why we felt this was something we should do as a committee. Um, and so uh, the essential uh, points are made here. Um, we felt that the current committee division is not working as well as it should. Here it simply says it's not working. That may be a bit too strong. But we felt that there was something that needed to be attended to. And so that's why we spent the time that we did, it, uh, almost three meetings, um, to try and think of a way that um, might be better. Um, and so that's, this is a proposal to you to get you to think about it, that's all. It's not a done deal, it's not something that, um, you know, it's, it's just a, a way to get us to rethink after one year, um, could we restructure our standing committees um, in a way that might make them um, more efficient um, and, and better. Uh, certainly there was a, a sense, I think, from the committee as a whole that the current CRC charge is simply not sustainable. Um, and so that was one driving factor. Um, the idea that the workload did not seem to be equitably shared, um, and I think also the sense that uh, for a large number of counselors, there was a sense that they didn't have access to some substantive matters that they liked to, 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 to delve into. 
So that's kind of the general sense of why we, we took the time to do this. Um, and then in the document, the, the memo, I list out seven uh, sort of goals that we use to guide our discussion. And so in a sense, looking at what we propose, you would look at those and say, well, does the, do these do anything or not? Maybe they don't. Um, so uh, very briefly, what we are proposing are three things. One is to move audit to finance, and hence uh, that would be the end of the audit uh, committee. Um, break CRC into two separate bodies, um, tentatively called CRC, and what's called TSO, and finally to move appointments to GOL and dissolve OCA. Um, and so for each one, I've given you a certain rationale, um, and you might want to have some questions briefly. I don't know the chair, the president will decide how much time we really want to spend on this tonight. Uh, one other point simply is that what this does accomplish, or what one good thing I think, uh, instead of 23 appointments that currently are made to the, the five standing committees, you would now have four standing committees and there would be 20 appointments. So it would reduce the number of appointments by three. Um, and the division of CRC into two bodies, the hope was that this would actually give more counselors a chance to sink their teeth into substantive matters and it maybe also give us a chance to think a little more proactively um, and not just reactively. So um, this is just a proposal. Um, the hope was that when you, if you did open it up in your packet, um, it sounds like some of you uh, had, it had the desired response, which is like, whoa, um, what's going on here? Um, and that's really what the, the point of it was. It's not that, you know, it's just to get you to think about what we've had a year of experience under our belts. Um, could we revisit our structure in a way that would make us a more efficient uh, body, make us a body that um, would um, allow us individually more opportunity to address substantive matters. Um, so that's the basic rationale. It's a proposal and it, you know, it may, may sink in the next five minutes, but the thought was just to get you to think about it and I think this is the first stage in a process. Um, what we're proposing could be done in stages. It could be done not at all. It could be uh, radically revised. Uh, you could just throw it in the trash. Um, but we've worked very, no, we've worked very hard on it but it's a proposal, um, and we thought it would be worth your time to uh, uh, think about it. Thanks, George. Are there any initial questions of clarification, or are there items or issues that you would like the committee to be prepared to expand on further next week? Or, excuse me, on the 27th. <laughs> We're not meeting next week. Sarah. I don't expect it. This is just something I'm flying to have um, GOL think about. Um, remember, I talked about all this redistribution of, of power. And um, also, I think that GOL has a great goal of trying to make sure that we run more efficiently. Another thing they said was that, you know, you want to try to make sure that, that uh, each every counselor has something meaty to be addressing. But at the same time, we don't want to overburden counselors, and I just had this idea that they can kick around, um, would be breaking up the appointments. So just initially what I was thinking is that GOL, its uh, rules and governance, um, reviews uh, charges of committees. I was thinking that maybe it would make the most sense for GOL to have the um, recommendations to town council for town manager appointments. The first part of CRC, which I think is just still called CRC, is going to be doing a lot of um, looking at planning and zoning. And I know that when we were, when uh, OCA's doing appointments, one of the complaints from uh, planning and zoning was that we didn't really know what they were doing. And I think that, that this committee will be so honed in on what exactly the planning board and the zoning board of appeals is doing that perhaps we might want to consider um, having those recommendations coming to town council from CRC. Um, and then, okay, so then the second, and I'm sorry, I keep forgetting, is it TSO? Yeah. Um, is dealing more, I, I think, with uh, like town council and public interfa interface, um, things that have to do. Public services. Yeah, public yeah. services. Yeah. And so services. I'm, I was thinking that perhaps that that committee might be dealing more with things like department heads and sort of like saying, hey, like this is coming up. So maybe, maybe just the reviewing and recommending to town council, mm -hmm. the town manager's appointments to uh, department heads. 
You got those. Okay. Other comments? Alyssa? So in the interest of transparency, um, OCA discussed this for the first time substantially today, had a brief discussion about it with some members missing prior. I just want to be clear that OCA didn't discuss this at all before this proposal was floated. And when OCA gets, I'm going to say bluntly, gets kicked around at this council on several occasions over the past several months, um, and then is proposed for dissolution, and yet OCA has not actually discussed it before it gets flowed to the rest of the council, it's a bad feeling. Mm -hmm. So this morning, I was told it wasn't a proposal. Of course, it's labeled a proposal. Um, I, I don't know why we want to bandy semantics on that. It's an idea. That's great. And there is a lot of merit to it. And I really, as I said this morning, I really appreciate the level of detail that's trying to say, well, if we split it this way, then this would go here and this would go there. I mean, there's been a lot of thought put into this. And I don't disagree that we might want to do a huge amount of it. And I appreciate the idea that we might also want to do it in stages. And for example, we want to get through like, you know, appointing our next planning board member before we do this. But I would say that the next time we talk about restructuring our committees, let's make sure some of our committees get to talk about it amongst themselves before it gets put out to the whole rest of the world, literally, to talk about. Because I feel like I should have agreed or at least lost a vote on whether or not OCA should be disbanded before it was brought forward to the entire council that OCA should be disbanded. So okay. process, I know everybody loves that. There's, are, is OCA meeting between now and the next time the council meets? Yes, this is not on the agenda. Um, OCA did discuss it this morning, okay. and so it, and Alyssa, I'm sure will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the critique was that uh, OCA didn't have a chance to discuss it before there was a proposal sent to the council mm -hmm. and before it was on a council agenda uh, for which I take responsibility as both chair of OCA and also as a member of GOL. Okay, so I guess the question is going to be, will you be able to add it to your agenda? It will not. It will not be added to the next meeting's agenda. You're done. Okay. Yeah. George. Uh, would audit like to speak about their demise? And um, <laughs> CRC, CRC got split into two. I mean, Excuse it's just to get us thinking. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, fine. Pat, okay. I'm uh, as a chair of the audit committee. Um, <laughs> The audit committee is really not a necessary committee. An audit is, and it does fit very comfortably in finance, and that's where it should have been from the beginning. So I have no problem. I don't think any of the members that were right here, the three of us, have any reason to try to hold on it, uh, to it as a separate committee. Dorothy. We, in fact, discussed this at a finance meeting, all right? So that didn't surprise me, but I was, I will tell you, shocked. And I thought, oh my God, what is this? Is this a coup? What's going on? That, I, that we did not know, CRC did not know any of these things. I mean, when I look at it now, I can see a lot of sense in the proposals. So I'm not saying I don't like the work that was done. I'm saying I really felt that something sneaky was going on. And I'm sure you didn't mean to, but that's what it felt like. And so the only thing I'd quibble in CRC at this point, though I do really like Sarah's suggestions regarding appointments, is that I still feel maybe we can share public ways because we've called ourselves a quality of life committee. And I will tell you public ways, or at least some aspects of public ways are very important to some of the things that CRC does. So I, I guess we talk about transparency. Th this wasn't very transparent. Kathy. Um, I have a suggestion for when we come back to this next meeting. Um, you very nicely, both in a general way, talked about a potential new division, and then you wrote charges for each of these committees. So I, I saw that the GOL now has specific to its charge, which it didn't before, an annual review of committees. You know, you know so it was... You know, it wasn't a specific thing assigned to it before, but I think it's a good idea, you know, that some, because we said the council shall review our committees every year, that's so someone's doing it. And I, when I went to the 
sir, the new committee, the TSO, TOS. Maybe yes. we can maybe we can make it a little bit a little jazzier. TSO. But anyway, it's hard to say a toss. But um, I wanted to know: Is parking there? Is uh, if we have issues with the way um, public services like fire or public works are working, because what I've seen in some other towns with committees like this, they mention those. You know, so it, it's not clear to me what issues. So just try, so my suggestion is that we all take a look at the draft charges as well as where Sarah was re-splitting some things, thinking in terms of do we like the way these look as well. Um, and then the, the only other um, comment I have on committees more generally is way back a year, more than a year ago in December, we made some decisions such as JCPC has two from finance and one from other places. And participatory budget has to have someone from finance. And just if we, I would like us just to revisit those and say we like them or not. Mm -hmm. Because it meant other people couldn't, if you weren't on finance, you couldn't be participatory budget. So were those good decisions or not good decisions? So, um, so that's at, not Look at the other scheme. charges. Yes. Yeah, I, we, I would agree with that. OK. Yeah. Uh, Andy. I have a number of comments, but I think I'm going to save a lot of them and find it in maybe just uh, send most of them to the committee, um, because I think that they, um, it's going to be simpler, and if we all do this tonight, it's going to be long. Um, right. I was a little bit concerned on the Finance Committee, of course, because we haven't had a chance to discuss it. There was actually, I thought, something missing from the committee charge that um, should have been in included in the committee charge for the Finance Committee. Um, some of the things regarding the suggested division, uh, sort of that chart that has various uh, assignments to committees did not necessarily make sense to me in every, every mm -hmm. circumstance. And so I think that was also a document that needs comment. I think that it's uh, good that we're, we have a group that is working on this and thinking about committee structure because it is what is uh, the core of how we work together effectively to bring things to the council. Uh, we want to have committees make our meetings more effective uh, by preparing us uh, for the issues that are going to be before us. And uh, it, it, so I've, I appreciate that they've started this and that they're willing to continue with this. And I will leave comments for later. And uh, tomorrow we have our Finance Committee meeting. I will mention it as uh, business not anticipated. 48 hours in advance, but I don't think I really want to discuss it at this meeting, both because of time and because I think it really ought to be, uh, any real discussion ought to be with the posted meeting. Um, I also, I'd like to uh, echo something and ask that, or basically say, George, would you please send a email to all town councilors that says, says do not reply all, <laughs> not for group discussion and ask for comments back to you in time for the committee to then use those comments, okay? Thank you. Darcy. Yeah, I'd like to say that, um, that I also had that sort of shocked reaction when I saw the, the packet and um, the, the degree of detail that we received from GOL, which I know took like a massive amount of time and discussion and so on to come up with. But it seems like um, if, if GOL has in its charge organization, um, I guess I feel like the, that it should be on recommendation of the council. Maybe that's not in the charge now, but it seems like, you know, maybe if we had an annual or every six months retreat, that would be a topic that we could cover at a retreat and then pass it on to GOL. Yes, we, we think that it makes sense to divide CRC or whatever. Um, 
But I, I think that this type of reorganization, a big monumental issue like that, that affects the whole council and the town uh, and all our constituents, uh, really needs to emanate from the full group and go to GOL and to, to have them work on it, because they do a great job. Um, and I also just wanted to say that I'm not completely convinced that we need to dissolve OCA. Um, it's, it almost feels like we feel like we have to dissolve it because we're creating another full committee and we don't have the capacity to have OCA and another committee. Um, but I, I see the possibility of keeping it and just having it be, you know, meet once a month to just to do appointments, which is what eventually, after we've gotten all our processes made, that's all it will be doing. So whether it's a subcommittee of GOL or its own committee, I don't think, you know, I don't really see necessarily the merit in dissolving it. Okay. Again, additional comments can go to the committee. Pat. I was you know, just going to say um, GOL did report, if, in previous reports in earlier meetings, we did bring this up. Uh, I also feel like while I can hear what Darcy's saying about it, everything should come from the 13, um, that's not how collaborative interaction works. I think there are things that will come from the 13. But when a committee has an idea and, they, and it's part of their charge, that working on that is a good thing. Where we failed is to be clear and communicate it in its early stages. But I think it has to be able to go. It, committees need to be independent um, as well as part of the council. OK. Additional comments that people feel they need to make tonight on this? Otherwise, the committee will be seeking your comments and will be brought back on January 27th. Yes, Alyssa. Just a question to think about for next time is whatever your goal was in terms of us potentially reorganizing ourselves into the existing committee structure, except this might very well be a brand new committee structure. So we talked about that, right, as at the year mark, we would see, you know, people want to trade off what they want to do. Right. So I'm just wondering, if, as GOL thinks about their workload, it would make sense, obviously, if we're close to making a change to not change our membership until that happens. Right. At, the, at our last meeting, when I believe I was elected for one month, I said that all committees would continue as present uh, with charges and membership. So that took us to tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Evan. Um, so I'm just, I just want to put forth some logistical questions. So uh, it sounds like GOL is going to ask counselors to provide feedback on the proposal to consider. GOL next meets this Wednesday, January 8th, and then the next scheduled meeting of GOL after that is January 29th. So unless we're asking all counselors to submit all of their feedback by tomorrow night, it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to consider it on January 8th. And then if we're not doing it till our next meeting, we won't have a proposal by the 27th. So I, I, we keep saying when it comes back on the 27th, when it comes back on the 27th. Uh, but I want to put out there that if, if we're soliciting feedback, it's not coming back on the 27th. Unless you meet at another time, you're right. It's not going to come back on the 27th. Keep me informed as to what you plan, OK? <laughs> if they could have a special meeting with public without public comment. Okay. Are there any other discussions regarding that? We have decided to wait on liaisons to um, the 27th, uh, and there are no appointments and committee reports. Pat, the, the possibly to be defunct audit committee. We <laughs> We're about to meet uh, the last week in January with uh, Sonia, uh, okay. and uh, the procurement officer will be giving, providing us uh, an example of the RFP that we're going to be sending out. Okay. Bylaw review. 
obviously we're still in the process, but the committee has done their job. Uh, CRC, Mandy Jo, you've given us nothing beyond what's in the report. Okay, town manager and council goals. I guess we got our marching orders. Thank you. Um, finance committee, Andy. Yeah, just real quick, we're meeting tomorrow and I would think that the three principal issues that we're probably gonna be talking about is um, trying to get to an end on the discussion of the affordable housing policy. Um, we may also reach conclusion on the financial implications of the uh, percent for art. And uh, Sonia has um, requested that we consider bringing to the council um, a series of financial orders, which for those of you who are familiar with town meeting, were fairly much like end of the year closeout kinds of things that town meeting used to have to do. And uh, it's now council responsibility, so they have to arise through the finance committee. She's already sent us uh, what she's proposing, and we'll discuss that tomorrow, too. And those would then probably come up on January 27th. Yes, and um, I don't think that it's going to be a time consuming thing because they are really just essential housekeeping issues that town meeting always used to deal with, with without any. Uh, substantial discussion and I expect that too. Okay, George, anything else from GOL? Uh, we will continue to work on a process for public ways requests to the council that will take up hopefully a good portion of our next meeting. This is public ways requests that are long term or permanent, and, right? And that require town council action. Right, yes. and particularly as they relate to public and uh, to parking safety and roads. Okay, um, outreach, Oka? Yes, so Oka met this morning uh, at which we voted uh, unanimously to declare that the applicant pool uh, for the planning board was sufficient to proceed to interviews. You may remember that was part of our adopted process. Um, so what that means is Oka is now going to be moving towards holding the interviews for the planning board. Uh, so two things to relay to all of you. First of all, you can write this down. Those interviews, barring some logistical challenge, will be held January, Wednesday, January 22nd at 6 p.m. Uh, I have confirmed that time with all applicants who have confirmed to me their continued interest in serving. Uh, I am currently working on some of the logistics of where that will be held. Uh, the Conservation Commission has this room, so it cannot be held in this room that evening. Um, other we rooms are in this building are perhaps too small, um, given that we will be inviting the full council and a number of people, and perhaps the, uh, the public might want to show up. Um, so it, it's looking likely that it will be a room in the Bang Center. Uh, when I have a location confirmed, I'll let you know. But January 22nd at 6 p.m. is when Oka will be holding these interviews, uh, which means Oka has a lot of work to do between now and then. One of the things, we have a special meeting on Wednesday morning um, to do the interview questions and to adopt selection guidance. Uh, so a reminder to all of you, I sent an email last Tuesday and a reminder email I think yesterday, uh, that if you want us to, if you have ideas of questions you want us to ask, or it might not even be, I want you to ask this question, but just, hey, I'd really like this information, figure out how to ask a question. Any comments to help us come up with those interview questions, please send those to me by end of day tomorrow um, so that OCA can have that for our Wednesday morning meeting. Uh, so at this point, we are moving ahead to fill that planning board vacancy with interviews, and we're putting together the documents for those. Just to refresh my memory, is it one position on the planning board? Currently there's one vacancy on the planning okay, board. Okay, and correct. two on ZBA. There is currently one on ZBA. There will be another in March. March we are okay. not yet acting on those. Okay, got it, thank you. Alyssa. I was just gonna mention for the people who are compulsive like I am, which I'm sure you're not, um, is that the interview questions that we used for planning board and ZBA and finance committee before are in the town council May 20th report. It's a very long report, so you can refresh your memory as to how we did it all the last time, and the basic questions we asked then are in there if you want to remind yourself what, we, what we'll May, be working May 20th, 2018, 2019, it, it's in the board report. 
for, from OCA at that time. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, percent for bylaw, Kathy? I think you basically are now going through well, a committee review. Right. Finance has done a review, and Andy's having me check the tape to make sure we voted on it, because that was my memory that we voted on yeah. it. And right. so we will be reporting back up. Um, it was favorably received, but it also went, the, the revised proposal with the report also went to CRC, so the instructions from the councils it would go to those two committees, then come back to the full council. So the, the finance end of it I know has happened because I'm on finance, so I was there when it happened, but I don't know what happened with CRC. Okay. CRC uh, yes. is taking that up on Wednesday of this week. Um, I believe the original referral of Percent for Arts said once finance and CRC are done, it goes to GOL because it is a bylaw. Okay. So, so would you like a copy of our draft report then? The, the finance report, Mandy, or is it fine to have just the two pieces you've got already? It's up to you. So, I, I mean, I can consider it in, but we'll be probably looking at different, right, yeah, different aspects of the bylaw. But if if you if finance wants CRC to see it, I'll I'll put it in the I'll put it in the packet. So, Mandy, Joe, with regard to CRC. Please let me know if you'll be ready by the January 27th agenda. I will do that once we have our meeting. Thank you. All right, anything else on committees? Mm -hmm. Approval of minutes. Uh, there are three sets of minutes. They actually cover two different dates, but actually three minutes. And the, um, those meetings were December 12th, 2019, which is a special council meeting. It was the state of the town address at the middle school. Uh, December 16th, 2019 was a public forum. Uh, that was on the um, Kendrick Park. And uh, December 16th was a regular town council meeting. Um, so uh, do I hear a motion? Is there any discussion about any of these sets of minutes? Yes, Dorothy. I, I didn't get a chance to read them. There was just so much stuff that was coming at the last minute, and I was trying to keep track of whether I had which version or whatever that just right. couldn't do it, and I had meetings today. Okay. So your options are either to approve and trust that others have caught it or to abstain. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Then... Uh, I, could, do I have a motion, please, to approve the minutes of December 12th, 2019, Special Council meeting, the State of the Town address, December 16th, 2019, Special Council meeting, Public Forum, and December 16th, 2019, Town Council meeting as presented. Okay, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, say, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. So I think you had nine zero three. Eight. Nine. Okay. Nine zero three. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bockelman, your report. Just a few things. So Friday is the next Cup of Joe at Cushman Market with the planning director, Chris Brestrup. On Wednesday, January 15th, uh, you've already agreed that there will be the reading of the, um, the an event for the Reverend Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on the town hall steps at 4 p.m. That's his actual birthday. Um, the Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Committee for Amherst Inc. will hold its breakfast on Saturday, January 18th at 9 p.m. at 9 a.m. at the middle school. Um, this Thursday, Leisure Services is having its meeting on the Kendrick Park Playground at the Bang Center at 5 p.m. Um, we are very pleased that we received a grant from the Volkswagen Emission Settlement Fund for $140,438, which we will use to purchase a new roll-off truck container for the DPW that runs, it's actually for the Solid Waste Fund, and it's a regular, uh, uh, is deemed to be one of the most uh, uh, best ways we could expend this money, and the state awarded it, a large sum of money for us. The um, 
East Street School, we went out for an RFP to do, create affordable housing there. There was one proposal that was submitted. The subcommittee that, or the re evaluation team that looked at it deemed unanimously that it was not responsive, so we've rejected that proposal. We will redo the RFP and go out again and because we still have interest in developing that parcel for affordable housing. Um, North Amherst Library, uh, there was an appropriation previously for, to develop plans for renovations to the North Amherst Library. We've come up with some um, preliminary estimates for what it might cost. And the reason I was moving forward on this is because we have uh, anonymous donors and others who are interested in funding this project. I've been very clear that this is, given all the other capital needs, this project was not a high priority unless it was funded entirely um, by private donations, which, um, and so the donors were saying, well, how much are you really talking about? So now working with Kuhn Riddle, um, we've come up with some estimates for what it would cost to add bathrooms and a lift, and then a addition, the second piece of it would be to add a, commu a small community room as part of the development. So now it's up to the anonymous donors and to see if that's something that they're willing to step up to the plate and really put the money on the table. It's a large sum of money, $750,000 for the first part, another $200,000 for the uh, room. So uh, there seems to be a lot of interest in making that happen privately, and I think we'd be, you know, I would propose to the council that we would, you would have to accept that donation if that were to be the case. Um, solar on the landfill, there was an issue with um, uh, another delay in that project, but uh, we, we've worked with DPU and with uh, Eversource and understand where we are in the process. So it will it will delay the project, but not inhibit the project from moving forward, it may cause a month to three month delay in addition to where we have been. And that's it, answer any questions? Yes, questions. Alyssa, you had a question. Yeah, go ahead and tell us that number on the North Amherst Library again because we got told over and over again that it was only gonna be a few tens of thousands and we said, nah, I think you're underestimating. So $750,000 for to, to add the lift and the two, two restrooms. And the re it's expensive. The reason is, is it's an iconic building, um, it's an older building, it's public procurement, which means prevailing wage has to be uh, used. And uh, so it just inflates the cost. And there's a lot of engineering work and there'd be some additional work that has to be done for the existing building, some foundation work that would have to support it as well. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Uh, Dorothy. Um, two questions. Has there been any serious consideration of moving the library to a better location so it's not in the middle of a traffic island? Number one. And number two, with the private donations, are there going to be naming opportunities? Um, no to the first. I mean, there have been a lot of discussions about the first thing, but that's never been seriously proposed. Um, and that would be a major change from how we're doing business. And on the second, uh, naming opportunities have not been uh, asked for, nor um, we haven't developed that process that far yet. Okay. Other questions? Yes. Kathy? Okay. I, I have two. I'll stay with the library. Um, uh, as you know, I've been trying to follow this. So I know, so my, my question is a bit about if the donor doesn't come up or the group doesn't come up with enough money for this. My understanding is there's been some looking at could we put a ramp in? Could we make it accessible for a lot less money? Is there a point at which we would say the big project isn't a green light and look at a smaller project? So that's a question on this one. And then it's a similar, it's a different issue completely, but on East Street School, if we go out for the RFP and again don't get a bid that we think is what we wanted, is there a point at which we say this isn't, going to be, this isn't going to be feasible, and we reconsider what we do with that piece of property so it doesn't just sit there as unused. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know, I'm assuming that decision comes partly from the Housing Trust, but mm -hmm. you know, do you give it another year, do you give it another two years? So just your thinking without mm -hmm. necessarily saying definitively. So on the first, we, uh, the, the North Amherst Library doesn't cost us anything to maintain, and I'm 
it hasn't risen to a level of priority on the chase in the capital plan to say we're going to invest money into that building so i think we have that on for in two or three years as a potential but i think we'll be reviewing that all through jcpc again this year um, so no there isn't a, a, a backup plan for it uh, at this point because it's, it's serviceable as it is now it is not accessible it doesn't have restrooms and uh, to do a, a ramp of some sort it, it, we just haven't looked at that in detail um, in terms of East Street, East Street Schools lot, that's been transferred, that's really in the trust and it would really be up to the trust to make that judgment. There are a lot of really smart people and developers on that who would help guide that discussion. Evan. So just following up on uh, the East Street School, and I, I don't want you to answer now because mm -hmm. it's late, but I, my understanding from conversations I've had was that um, the the one organization that did respond responded with a number of questions about whether a project there was even feasible. Some questions about wetlands, um, which when we were having with tonight talking about sort of the other affordable housing project uh, that we dealt with in our first year, I thought, well, given sort of this new wrinkle in the East Street School, um, maybe it would be good to get an update be with some more specifics than just in, I mean, we, we, we made Valley folks come across the bridge to tell us what's going on with their project because it was taking a little bit longer than we expected. I think we all expected the East Street School project to move along a lot faster as well. I appreciated this update, but it was one of those updates that actually caused me to ask more questions than to have more answers. And I don't want you to have to explain it now because we're all tired. Um, but maybe in a future agenda, we always love saying that. Um, or we could, we could write update. something to you, yeah. give you an update written. Yeah. OK. Are there other questions of the town manager? OK. Uh, then we're going to town council comments. Um, I don't really have any special report to make at this point. Um, regarding future agenda items, besides all the various things we've delayed until the 27th or beyond, uh, are there any other future agenda items that people would like to make sure get on the list, which we will be providing you? I'm, I'm still very curious to know how we're going to deal with the parking issue on Lincoln Avenue. Um, the way does not seem to be clear yet. Um, the, um, excuse me, I'll get it down. GOL has been charged with coming up with a process that they will then bring back to the council as to how we would deal with requests and or these kinds of issues that particularly affect our public ways in a long-term manner and are of high, high interest to um, various populations around town. And they're just in that process. Okay. I don't, I thought I communicated that to the group, but maybe I didn't. Okay. Anything else? Future agenda items? Other counselor comments? Topics not reasonably, yes? Elections. No, don't worry, we're getting there. <laughs> Believe me. Um, topics not reasonably anticipated? There's tons, but it's not gonna happen tonight. Um, all right, I'm turning this over to Athena, who as our clerk of the council, runs the election for president. This is gonna be slightly different from last time, so I'm gonna run through the steps. First, I will ask for nominations for council president. Nominations do not require a second. Counselors may nominate themselves. After each nomination, I will ask the counselor nominated if they accept the nomination. When there are no further nominations, I will ask each nominee if they would like to make a brief statement. I will then call the roll, and each counselor excluding the nominees may make a brief statement on the election of the president. I will then ask each nominee if they would like to make a closing statement before I call the roll for a vote. Please state either the name of the nominee you wish to vote for as president or abstain. At the conclusion of the roll call vote, I'll announce the results. The nominee who receives a majority of votes, at least seven yes, will be deemed elected as president. If no nominee receives a majority of votes, 
I will repeat the process beginning with accepting nominations and then I will swear in the president after the election. I'll now ask for nominations for council president. Councilor Pam. I once again would like to nominate Lynn Griesmer for president of the Amherst Town Council. To the comments I made, was it a month ago? Because it really seems like yesterday. We're not, we're not uh, making statements fine. at this point. Very good, thank you. Lynn, do you accept the nomination? I do. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, Lynn, would you like to make a statement? Um, I said this last time, but I will repeat it again. It's been actually a honor, a privilege, and a challenge <laughs> to serve this um, outstanding group of 13 people. Um, and I um, think of it as something that where we all signed up not quite knowing what was going to, what it would look like. Uh, but a year later, um, we probably spent more time with each other than we have with significant others, children and otherwise. Uh, we have accomplished a lot. In fact, I took the opportunity to finally fill in the rest of this complicated chart, which Mandy Jo developed for me using the charter. And we are going to pass this on to Athena so that she can keep a record of various things that we have to do every year and when we do them. And um, other than that, um, if you so choose, I would look forward to serving you again. That's it. All right, I'm going to call the roll and each counselor can maybe, may make a brief statement on the election of the president. Councillor Brewer. This is when we get to talk. I appreciate all the work that you've done. I appreciate your receptiveness to the comments that were made tonight. I was very frustrated that we weren't having that conversation and I was very happy that we were able to make the time for it tonight. And I think that we all have learned more about what we expect of the role and I appreciate you being in it and I vote for Lynn Grisomer. Thank you. Councillor DeAngelis. Thank you for your work. Councillor Dumont. Uh, Lynn Griesmer. We're just making a brief statement. I'm so voting for Lynn Griesmer. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Haneke. Just want to say it's been a pleasure working with you for the past year. Councillor Pam. I appreciate she still has a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Ross. At times I have offered my critiques and they have always been well taken, and I appreciate that. Um, and so I will vote for Lynn uh, without hesitation, but do appreciate the conversation we had earlier. Councilor Ryan. We're in your debt. <laughs> Councilor Shane. Um, I also want to give my appreciation, including to when I asked for a delay on this the conversation with Lynn immediately after was, any ideas of how we can do things differently? How can we address some of these, which I think reflects the way you've run everything all year long, and I really appreciate it. So I vote for Lynn. Councilor Schreiber. What they all said, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Councilor Steinberg. I appreciate the incredible amount of thought and time and generosity that you've exhibited to all of us. And um, I also um, ask you to uh, thank Brian for his forbearance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Councillor Swartz. I'm really glad that we had the opportunity to just talk about things and just maybe set a process and rubs off on me that we'd set something up. But I also would like to thank you for putting up with sometimes my Irish temper, 
and, uh, and I, I know it's a shock. He never would have, I know. <laughs> but I, I really appreciate, you know, being able to have this conversation and your willingness to, to do that. Would you like to make a closing statement? Uh, thank you for your support, and that's it. All right, I'll now call the roll for a vote. Councillor DeAngelis? Griesmer. Councillor Dumont? Lynn Griesmer. Councillor Griesmer? Lynn Griesmer. Councillor Haneke? Lynn Griesmer. Councillor Pam? Lynn Griesmer. Councillor Ross? Lynn Griesmer. Councillor Ryan? Lynn Griesmer. Councillor Shane? Lynn Griesmer. Councillor Schreiber? Griesmer. Councillor Steinberg? Lynn Griesmer. Councillor Swartz? Lynn Griesmer. And Councillor Brewer? Lynn Griesmer. That's 12 yes votes. Oh gosh, I have to get sworn in. Can I, can I say something very briefly? Yes. Okay. I, I would say that true leadership comes when you're given a challenge, which is um, sometimes a little bit unpleasant, and you rise to it and deal with it. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. I will ask for nominations for council vice president. And we will do the same process we just went through. And I'll ask for uh, Athena's assistant whenever we need to do through, go through the roll call. Uh, nominations do not require a second. Uh, counselors may nominate themselves. And after each nomination, I will ask the counselor nominated if they accept the nomination. When there are no further nominations, I will ask each nominee, nominee if they would like to make a brief statement. So let's start with that. The floor is open for nominations. S Steve Sharp. I'll nominate Kathy Shane. Okay. Uh, Kathy, do you accept? Um, I am totally honored to be nominated, and I'm going to decline because I think at this time it would be good to continue this team, but I would like to leave open the idea that we could have a change or some change uh, in a third year. So I would be honored to serve as vice president, but right now I don't want to split us up. I think we need unity. Okay. The floor is, continues to be open for nominations. Pat. I nominate Mandy Jo Haneke for vice president. Mandy Jo, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Okay. Are there other nominations at this time? Okay, then we will I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. And this is where each comment, excluding Mandy Jo, gets each person, um, each Ma counselor. Ma Mandy can make a statement first. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like to make a statement? So um, similar to what Lynn said, I would be honored and privileged to be able to serve again. Um, it was an honor and privilege to serve the last year. Um, I listened very carefully to the conversation we had earlier today. Um, I hope that over the past year, I've shown my willingness to listen and earned your confidence and trust. Um, and I hope to continue doing so over the next year. Um, and Kathy, that was very nice of you to what you said just now. Okay, then I'm asking the clerk to ask each counselor, except for Mandy Jo, if they have a brief statement. Councillor Dumont. I have really appreciated um, Mandy Jo's willingness to, it's not really necessarily related to being vice president, but being able to be open to be working with all the different counselors, especially me, on, 
I appreciate you helping with the uh, with the motion tonight, and and that wasn't unusual. Mandy Joe's worked with me on a number of things, and I really appreciate it. Um, so uh, I think that I'm that I appreciate all that you've done. President Griesmer. I'm sorry, did you see me? <laughs> I think I'm going deaf. I know I'm going deaf. Um, I actually appreciate the comment about keeping the team together. And there's often been times where I've wanted to be a little more overly complimentary or outwardly complimentary about the things that Mandy Jo has done but I've always hesitated. And I've hesitated because I didn't want people to think that it was a favored. But when somebody takes the time to go through the charter and list everything so that I don't have to do that, and when someone takes the time to talk to one of you about your motions or the many other things that Mandy Jo listed and probably some she didn't, um, that's the kind of thing that I appreciate in a vice president. And it's the kind of thing that I'm going to look forward to spreading among others. Okay. Councillor Pam. Well, I just want to say that I, I appreciate the hard work that you're putting into CRC. And I look forward to working with you. Councillor Ross. So. Whereas I said I supported Lynn Griesmer without hesitation, I will be supporting Mandy Joe with one slight hesitation, um, which is watching the amount of work she has put into this and her competency with that work makes me, who perhaps might be interested in the vice presidency in the future, uh, wonder if I could ever uh, live up to that and so uh, I, I which I, I say complimentary but also with legitimate concern um, and which is why I think the conversation we had about spreading the workload around is is something that is useful but what I have seen is Mandy Joe put in a tremendous amount of work into making this council function often as we learn behind the scenes doing things that I know I would not want to do and so I appreciate that Councillor Ryan Mandy is someone that whenever I have a question, I know I can go to her with uh, confidence that I will get a thoughtful and helpful answer. She's also an excellent role model for me as chair of GOL. Um, I'm never going to reach those heights, but uh, each day I try to uh, emulate her, uh, what she's done. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Shane. Um, as a reflection of how closely I think Mandy listens when I was, I was actually asked if I was run and so I was sounding out trying to figure this out um, and talking with you yesterday um, late at night on both what you did and you were just so gracious when I said this wasn't going to be personal, it was talking about rotating. It made me feel even better about you continuing for another year and I think what I said about um, teamness, I, I don't, th I would hope that none of us would just run for the sake of seeing if you can get enough votes, because even if you could get enough votes, if we split up again over these issues without a value added, it just doesn't make any sense. So I think we should be thinking about the future generations, a learning curve, and your openness to listening has been uh, just a joy. Councillor Schreiber. End of the alphabet. You guys have said it all, but thank you so much for your service. It's been a, it's, we're in great hands. Councillor Steinberg. Mandy, I just appreciate the amount of work that you do and the uh, way that you approach the work and approach working with people and what you contribute from your background, your legal skills and knowledge, as well as your experience as a member of the Charter Commission and uh, how you've effectively, 
not being uh, tagged with the name, been our parliamentarian too. Absolutely. Uh, it really has been invaluable yeah. to this council. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Swartz. Again, end of the alphabet, but I'm very glad that you know there, that you're there, you're stepping up, and that you've taken on this role, which is daunting. Councillor Brewer. Mandy Jo does a ton of work in a ton of different areas. I am going to say again for the record because it makes me so popular that the charter work that she did in terms of making the chart, that was the town manager's job. He chose not to do that with the previous executive who asked him to do it. He chose not to do it at the beginning of the change in the charter. That was something a volunteer, I'm sorry, $5,000 doesn't really go that far, um, had to take on because staff refused to do it. And that's as simple as it is. And that was a huge amount of effort. And it was necessary for us to be able to get that done. Um, so I appreciate that it was a crazy thing to do, but it was necessary. So thank you for that. Um, I am unhappy with the team effect. I do feel it excludes the other counselors. I don't feel there was any receptiveness to the comments that I made a year ago or the comments I made today. And so I am uncomfortable, but I know that Mandy Jo will continue to do a good job. Councilor DeAngelis. I think you're a hoot. <laughs> I, and that's what her husband thinks of me. And I, it's supposed to be a good thing. You are a good thing. Um, you listen. Um, and sometimes you let yourself be as vulnerable as you really are. And I thank you for those moments, as well as your intellect and your thoughtfulness. And can I just say, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time um, with jabs at the town manager or um, your opinion is frequently very important to me. I have a lot of respect for you, but I think sometimes you're hurtful and it's not appropriate behavior. We're going to proceed at this time with the election. Roll call. Um, Mandy, if you want to make a closing statement. Oh, I'm sorry. They keep forgetting. <laughs> um, that's a lot to take in, um, but I, I just want to say it was humbling. So thank you. Now the election. President Griesmer. Haneke. Councillor Haneke. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Pam. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Ross. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Ryan. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Shane. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Schreiber. Haneke. Councillor Steinberg. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Swartz. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Brewer. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor DeAngelis. Haneke. Councillor Dumont. Mandy Jo Haneke. Now you get to get sworn in. <laughs> If there's no other business before the council, I hear I would like to hear a motion to adjourn. Darcy said adjourn and George said second. All those in favor? I, oh, I'm sorry. Darcy, what would you like to say? I just am interested to know where that process came just used for the circuit asking for people's opinions. 
where the process? The process for the election. I'm just wondering, because I've never seen an election run it, like that. It came out of last time's discussion where people said they wanted an opportunity to make comments before we did the election. And so the one of the several adjustments that I made to the agenda was the earlier discussion about the role of president, vice president, and committees. And the second was to add that round in during this process. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. Well, let's not do it then. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you.